We didn't. We weren't live on air for that slightly X-rated conversation. Hey, everyone. <laughs> See, and uh, welcome. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know why you had. I don't know why you had to say that really disgusting, overly sexual thing, Christy. I feel slightly violated. I'll be honest. I'm uh, fine. <laughs> And by the way, of course, it wasn't me. It was uh, Kevin. But uh, yeah, uh, actually, it was Jonathan and Kevin together, I think, that came up with that. So hello, everyone. Welcome to the happy hour. I am Christy. Kevin is also here, as always, because he's a co-host of the Christy and Kevin happy hour. And joining us this week uh, is some random geek. So welcome. Hello. Thank you for inviting me. Um, we didn't invite you. Actually, you just showed up in a hangout offering to, to be in the clinic. So it's yeah, that's right. That's right. I, I, I reach out to them. Today happened to be a day off. I just wanted a day off of work to like do YouTube stuff or whatever or just have a day off. And since like Kevin and Chrissy were like, hey, let's have a happy hour or do you want a happy hour? I said, hey, Chrissy, can I come on? Thank you. Can I come on? <laughs> But uh, too, so that's it. We get uh, somebody else from the chat on, and also finally, after many weeks of going back and forth in the chat and not being able to find her channel, um, Mariana has her wrench this week. So mm -hmm. congratulations! And speaking of the chat, Kevin, is there anything you'd like to say to the chat? I I value your input. Well, I'm glad you're here. <laughs> oh no! It must be opposite day in Kevin world. Nah, fuck you. Fuck all of you. But especially, especially young Thomas, of yes, course, of course, uh, and and yeah, Jonathan, what's it like? Uh, do you have anything to say to the chat now that you're outside of it? Oh my God, you people look exactly the same to me. Hello there. <laughs> like, oh, you look so tiny from up there, down there. You, ah. look, you all look like ants. I could head crush head. you beneath yeah. my fucking feet, <laughs> peasants. I can, I can see my house from up here. <laughs> Okay, <laughs> so guys, we have basically a drama-laden, you know, lowbrow show lined up for you this evening. But really, you know, that's what you come here for. <laughs> if you wanted, you know, highbrow stuff, you'd go to PBS. If you want progressive takes on internet drama and also the ridiculousness of modern politics, you come here. So welcome again. And we're going to start off. Uh, actually, Jonathan, you had a nominee. And since you had a, um, a no actually, I'm thinking of something else first. You had a nominee for last week's uh, chat comment, the fire oh, comment. Yes. The chat. Would so, you, yeah. I don't know if Kevin had a chance to, to see this one, so uh, I'm sure he'll well enjoy Christy, it. Christy, eventually you're going to learn. I've not done any preparation no. for this. <laughs> We're just I don't know what the hell is going on. <laughs> I learned to speak the English language many years ago. That That is literally my preparation for this discussion. <laughs> That's a good thing that we know that. So, I've just noticed. Anyway, so yes, yeah, so from last uh, happy hour, a uh, chat Ooh. fire. Laura Strom said in the chat, "I literally, I literally just opened up the live stream. The first thing I heard is Yeti pubes. Perfect." Oh, I thought it was the one about Yeti poop pubes sounding like a cooler that you had highlighted. But, oh, I highlight both of them actually. Oh, okay, so that was what it was supposed to be. But yeah, that was the next one. Like then oh. that. Next, next, babe, Yeti pubes. When your pubes are also really expensive brand of hot and cold cups of cool and coolers. Nice. Yeah. So, uh, shout out there to the snarkiness from the chat last week. Mm -hmm. And moving right along, um, it looks like the only person to bring a pub quiz question is our guest this week. <laughs> he is the most prepared person in the room. Well, I just want to say, before, before we jump to that, well, to I am some random geek, and I figure I, it? it has to be oh, like a geeky related question. No, oh. you guys, it's going to be a talk over tonight session. <laughs> Arm wrestling. Oh, sorry, because I'm talking, and I don't know if anyone can fucking hear me. Uh, yes, we can validate yeah. your existence, Kevin. We're here no, for you. No, you need you need to pay me attention <laughs> all the no, time. At the moment, it's gone now. Fuck it, don't matter. Go on. <laughs> So the pub quick question uh, is, so hopefully I don't cut out. Uh, the, the, everyone knows the Studio Ghibli, and they know of the director Hayao Miyazaki from Studio Ghibli, but what other famous uh, director has I been... <laughs> okay, uh, yeah, you're never going to do the pub quiz question again. Sorry, we're taking that right away from you. Hey, everybody, what's the capital of Colorado? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. 
<laughs> That's way too niche. <laughs> you did warn me. It was pretty geeky. But if you want yeah. to finish your question, you go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. <laughs> Nobody will get it right but you, but go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> well, if Hank was in the live chat, maybe he would. So what other famous director from like Studio Ghibli uh, is known for being from Studio Ghibli? N name another director from Studio from Ghibli. That will be the more fair question. They're, but yeah, people would just have to like Wikipedia it or Google it. Okay, Dave. or you can do the alternative. Yeah, Dave. Dave, Dave Smith. <laughs> this guy. He gets him every time. Um, yeah, and your alternative for me is what is the capital of, of Colorado? I don't know yet. I'm going to have to look that up. Maybe somebody in the chat actually knows. But uh, well, I, only <laughs> know, I only know Denver and Boulder. Yeah, I so. think it's Bo oh, I think it's Boulder. But I could be wrong because I actually don't care about the cop capital of Colorado. So it's not information I retain. Why are you so mountain phobic? That's yes, I am. I have a Berg, Berg phobia. In, in, that's what they call it in Germany. A Berg phobia. God, again. Well, yeah, but it's oh, German. I... <laughs> so, how are you? By the way, Kevin, we didn't really get a chance to check in with us because we had so many things to get through in the uh, in the opening. But how are you doing? I, I sensationally well. How are you? Mm. Yeah. It's Friday, so it's good. Jonathan, how are you doing? I'm doing okay. It's like noon where I am, but like that doesn't stop me from drinking. It's in my day off. <laughs> right. Don't pretend like it's just drinking. Just tell us. You went straight to the vein as soon as you woke up. <laughs> yeah, well... yep. Rum and Coke, shook it up in the syringe, right? Get the freeze out. Otherwise, it really tickled. And then mainlined it, baby, in an <laughs> IV bag. You're far, too, you're far too innocent. I was talking about him taking heroin. <laughs> 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 it's, I'm, in, I'm in Seattle. I'm in the Seattle area, so we're kind of known for that. <laughs> exactly. You've, you've basically Damn. the two things I know about Seattle is that you take lots of heroin and occasionally uh, write uh, stories about white whales that involve too many whale facts and not enough fucking narrative. That's all <laughs> I know. It, See, it also was, rains a, a lot. Sort of, that was yeah exactly that was that was almost a highbrow joke there because it was a literary <laughs> reference even though it also contained illicit drugs, yeah. <laughs> which is where you were like relating for again. just kind of sprinkling in the highbrow on top. Exactly, my jokes my jokes are like reading Proust while high as fuck. <laughs> that's a yeah, that's an interesting mental image. Well, you're mm. welcome. Well, well, it's in Seattle because of uh, the rains a lot, and there's a lot of uh, like overcast and clouds. Uh, there's people. It, it's a real. It's a well-read city, and also Washington State's one of the first states to like legalize pot. So, there you go. There you go. I'd move there, mm -hmm. uh, but uh, I'm pretty happy where I am. But I would, I would consider it. I would like to try the West Coast a little bit before I kick the bucket. Um, so, guys, well, if you're going West Coast, there's only there's LA. The rest of it's oh. bad. Oh, intellectual LA. and cultural desert. Oh. LA is the cultural desert. The rest of it's nice. How dare you? <laughs> I, of all the places in the world I want to visit, I think LA is on the bottom. It's really, really? down there. Oh, fucking hell. It's one of the great cities of the world, surely. It's simply oh. just concrete. It's flat and concrete. It goes on the exactly. Pittsburgh would be at the bottom. Ugh. I don't know what, what would be in Pittsburgh that would be worth going other than a like, Steelers game. Penguins? <laughs> Good comeback. More <laughs> sports. More exactly. sports things. I mean, well, I like the fact that our audience aren't sporty particularly, so a lot of them will have heard me say penguins and thought I meant going to the zoo. <laughs> <laughs> I like the fact that our audience puts up with us talking bullshit for the first 10 minutes of the show instead of getting I don't know. Topics. I've said it before and I'll say it again. I don't know why anyone listens. I don't <laughs> yeah. understand it. This is for us, you guys. Yeah, exactly. along for the ride. I mean, it is, it is literally just some people. I mean, we're not in a pub because we're thousands, well, hundreds of miles away anyway. Um, yeah. uh, no, those houses for me. Well, yeah, thousands. Yeah, now, now we've got leggings, man, in the room. <laughs> um, uh, yeah, the, uh, we're not literally in a pub, but we're basically just talking. The fact that this is being broadcast is uh, irrelevant, frankly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we just happen to hit record. Otherwise, we'd be talking about the same stuff. Yeah. And the stuff that we're going to be talking about tonight. So um, I think maybe what we'll do is we'll we'll do the Jordan Peterson stuff at mm -hmm. the end. Um, we'll okay. have a little bit of a highbrow talk first, just because it's it's very newsworthy and it's going to be coming out shortly. We're going to talk about Dr. Ford's allegations against Kavanaugh, Justice Kavanaugh, and uh, then we're going to talk about MythCon at length. 
So very quickly, you guys, um, they appear to be in negotiations to have uh, Dr. Ford testify next week and uh, Justice Kavanaugh. Looks like the Republicans want to, want to purposely set it up as a he said, she said by not inviting any witnesses, by not having the FBI investigate, which was a precedent at the Anita Hill investigation. That FBI investigation during the Anita Hill Clarence Thomas hearings took three days. Mm -hmm. um, so, uh, should we go first, Jonathan, for a reaction, and then Kevin, for your reaction? Uh, my, yeah, my reaction is, uh, it, 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 I, the Republicans, they always claim to want civility from the Democrats, but they never act any civility um, for when, when they're in power and their own things. And so they act like internet shitlords. It, exactly. Rules, one rule for them, one, the other rules are for people who don't agree with them. It, yeah, I mean, it's like with uh, all of the uh, precedents before earlier, that doesn't matter now. And they'll just, they will say anything just to like, let's get this confirmation through, get this confirmation through, get this confirmation through. No, you're breaking the rules, even though that's not against rules. Don't do that. Shame on you. I'm, I'm, I'm doing this thing with my finger. I'm doing this thing with my finger to you. <laughs> okay. That's what she I said. <laughs> <laughs> I I teed it up for Kevin and he just knocked it out of the park. Indeed. Yeah, well now we're back to back to sports. <laughs> yeah, sports and sex. Really. Those are the two main themes of the show. Whoa, people in the streets. Oh, shouty uh, Germans. Yeah, by the way, a couple of weeks ago we had a, like some shouting in the street. I think it was people just uh, someone had let a cart run into a car and there was a bit of kerfuffle. But afterwards, by the way, no cops showed up, no sirens, nothing like that. So apparently it was just a little neighborhood. Well, that's, as long as as long as they're not invading Poland again, I'm cool with it. Just let Germany be. <laughs> okay. As long as they're not starting, you know, epoch defining world wars, I'm all. Oh yeah, good. or redefining Europe by leaving it. Uh, the EU. Anyway, yeah, so Kevin. Oh, ow, oh, oh, <laughs> Jesus. Like, it's not fucking me enough already. Yeah, Jesus. I'm sorry. I'm beating up on you, and you you were one of the same people who voted to remain. No, indeed. So your take on the Dr. Ford thing, looking from the outside, it's Kevin. Horrific. Horrific. And America sinks further into the Trump morass. Mm -hmm. The president literally doing victim blaming on Twitter, and the Congress <sighs> doing victim blaming, and uh, the Senate doing victim blaming and people doing jokes about Ruth Bader Ginsburg being sexually assaulted by Abraham Lincoln. Uh, yeah, uh, America, it, it, the rape culture was always there. It was yeah. really quite so in your face as now. It's very yeah. really appalling. But uh, you, Kevin, I can't possibly have done it because Roy Moore said so. Oh, bollocks, that makes it worse. Yeah, 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 it's always these men standing up for other men for what they did 30 years ago. Mm. Well, it's interesting, and I think it's a fairly good comparison, that uh, men come forward about being raped by Catholic priests and are quite rightly treated with dignity, well, a certain amount of dignity in respect, yeah. and believed uh, quite rightly, and it's a national and international scandal. Women do the same thing about Kavanaugh or Trump or various other people in the entertainment industry or whatever. And are treated with not just skepticism or suspicion, but outright denialism, and treated as if they are at fault for having been raped. Oh, but that's yeah, and this this victim blaming goes all the way back to the the Bible. I mean, in mm -hmm. in the passages in the Hebrew scriptures, it's you know, if a woman's in a city and she doesn't scream, she's guilty of adultery, not rape. Well, what if he puts his hand over her mouth or puts a rag in her mouth? Then what? You know, so it's just this um, this burden. I mean, I'm not going to like go for technicality for from the Bible because, like, if we're going to apply technicality, no, the attitudes. Right, exactly. Yeah. Well, yeah, I mean, the, the absolutely the attitudes come from that aspect. I mean, in the Bible, it literally says that if you a woman is raped, not only do you not have to atone for having raped her, all you have to do is go to the father and pay him, is it 10 shekels or something, and then you own the woman you raped. Mm -hmm. Right. Well, you have to marry her because you defiled her. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Nice for she's, her. She's now, ha you having raped her means she's now worthless to any other man. Yeah. It's like if someone picks up your Big Mac. Yeah. It's like someone picks up your Big Mac and then they lick it. And you're like, <sighs> well, fuck, I can't eat that now. You just eat it, you asshole. That's how they treat women like that. Yeah. yeah. But um, I right. lick it. It's now mine. Yeah. Did you have more to say on that? Because I have some thoughts. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to have a bit of a rant. I, I suggest, um, as the wombs in the room, you be allowed to rant at, at will. So, 
sorry, I muted myself because I was going to have a drink. Yeah. Um, so right. even even women are muting themselves. Yes, this. I am. I'm silencing <laughs> myself. It's the patriarchy. It's patriarchal norms I've instilled and internalized. Uh, all right. So really, big picture stuff, and then little picture stuff. Big picture stuff is you have to realize that the Republicans are close to achieving their entire goal for the last. 30 going on 40 years, which was to make it harder for democratic the Democratic base to vote, vote through voter ID laws and voter suppression tactics by gerrymandering districts to guarantee that they would always have power and the Democrats would have to get 56 or 58 percent of the vote just to like break even and have a chance at flipping a seat. And they wanted mm -hmm. to stack the courts. So to turn over to um, reject any challenges to these voter ID laws or these gerrymandering, that's what their real goal is. They are working toward one party rule and they are one woman and a rape, a rape, attempted rape accusation away from getting what they want and having the possibility of controlling the, um, the, the institutions of America that used to be a democracy, um, even though they're going to be a minority of the population for decades to come. And that's the real yeah. existential challenge that we're facing. And it's, it's why they're pushing so hard, despite their own negative public perceptions of how they're handling this. They're so close to their goal, it doesn't matter anymore. Because if they get this, they'll be able to try to take back houses and stuff and, and really cement in their power structure forever. And, um, and obviously scrap Roe v. Wade and various other... Oh, yeah. Things. They're going to allow deregulation. They're going to, you know, basically keep corporate personhood, keep money as speech to keep rich people having more speech than poor people. It's going to be oligarchy. It'll be institutionalized yeah, oligarchy. Yeah. And if if they get the hold like they will, it's, it's, it's going to like cause me to lose face in the institutions. It would be also yeah. be able to reform it back. And as I, I have some faith in the institutions now, but it's like I, 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 I'm a radical. I want like significant anarchism, but that's me. But if I, if, I don't know what I will do if I lose faith in the institutions and, and I'm trying to imagine like other people and where they are, if they, if they themselves also lose faith in the institutions, if they haven't already. Yeah. I mean, if you look at the Westminster model, it's designed to be temporary one party, one party dictatorship, uh, one party rules, and they pass the policies. And then at the next election, they're held accountable. But another principle of the Westminster election system is that governments can change parties and you have to put up with the party's policies when they have power, knowing that if you get into power next time, you'll have a chance to put in your policies. If you denied people the chance to ever change parties, then you're going to get to revolution. And yeah, the American system is designed to swap between the parties and also to have the parties be a check on each other, you know, across the houses, uh, across the, the branches. But this has been a long term. This is like Alex um, or Alec, the uh, legislative exec committee that um, is organized by rich Republicans and they churn out copycat legislation like on voter suppression and stuff. And they give it to Republican legislators and uh, governors and they just pass these cookie cutter bills all across the country. It's a systematic thing. They've, they've really organized and well, um, well prepared to as assemble as all this power and then keep it and wield it. So it's, it's it really is, this, this midterm election is possibly our last chance to, if they get Kavanaugh in, it's gonna be long-term damage. I don't know what we're gonna do about that, but at least with uh, the census coming up in 2020, if these gerrymandering, if the Republicans keep control of the legislatures and the governorships when we're doing the next census, then that's it, that's American democracy over. Um, and then on a micro level, one of the things that we keep focusing on, the media keeps focusing on, and I think over overly, is whether or not he, so there's two parts of it, it's, it's whether or not he did this. And right now she's got a very credible claim and there's a witness they're hiding. So it, it, the mm. evidence is tilting toward her. But also he said he's he didn't do it. Um, and if he goes before Congress and lies, then that is disqualifying. I actually think yeah. if he lied about it about it now, before he testifies under oath, it's disqualifying. To lie about that crime is disqualifying. And I also learned something from Rachel Maddow, who is mm -hmm. wonderful, but she goes on too long, as I've said in the past, she used to like <laughs> tighten her stories up. But the crime took place in Massachusetts or Maryland, one of the M states on the coast, I forget. 
uh, the prep school that he was attending and where Dr. Ford lived at the time. It does not have a statute of limitations on sexual assault um, mm. crimes. It is very possible that if Dr. And the only reason that the local police haven't investigated the crime is because they said Dr. Ford hasn't filed a complaint. She could at any time file a complaint and the de police department would investigate that complaint. And if they had enough evidence, you could have him, you could see a sitting Supreme Court justice arrested and tried because there's no protection against arrest for justices. Mm. That would be something to watch as almost, almost like straight yeah. out of the movie if that if that, if that happens. But uh, uh, right now, I don't want that to come to that because I don't want Brad Kavanaugh to be on the Supreme Court, period. Right you now. Know, honestly, the last two years have felt like a, a Netflix series, and this is a spin off. This is just a spin off show. You know, <laughs> that's what it feels like. So, anyway, thank you for my rant. Um, it was just to say, watch out for the big picture and don't forget to look at what he says now and how he handles himself now as a as representative of his character. So, yeah. It, it, yeah, it reminds me of that uh, Vox uh, video that I liked and tweeted out it where it follows the pattern of that a lot of like uh, men in power seem to always have or they like deny it or said it never happened and it, it they the vox video was really good at like showing how like he's just one of many men that like follow this pattern when they are accused of sexual assault yes yeah it's a playbook that they have and it mm -hmm. always involves um smearing the woman and making yes. the, the perpetrator or the victim mm-hmm or even if it did happen, it doesn't matter, or something like that, yeah. which is yeah, it's disgusting as well. Yep. So, should we get on to MythCon? Sure. Yeah. All right. Because we've will... because we've already talked, you know, we haven't talked enough about weird, <laughs> weird fucking sexual. Um, <clears throat> <laughs> yeah, it's kind of a theme <laughs> of the show tonight. Yeah. Sadly, because of the kinds of content we cover, it's a theme of most shows. So you guys might know that MythCon is happening. It's happening tomorrow. Tonight is the party. It's all kicking off. And that's why we were doing our little pre-MythCon show here to go over some of the highlights of what might but be happening. Before we even get to that, Sargon has already let down his new political party. Because for oh. those who don't know outside of Britain, and actually but probably most people in Britain, uh, don't know that the uh, United Kingdom Independence Party, UKIP, uh, is its annual um, conference is taking place in my own hometown of Birmingham. Or oh. Birmingham, as it's properly pronounced. Um, uh, yeah, and uh, he didn't speak there because he's flown to uh, Milwaukee. Uh, streets full of gammon. Yeah. Well, yeah, but that's Birmingham <laughs> anyway. So, I mean, that's... <laughs> the, oh, come I on, mean, it's Muslim Central. Aren't they uh, going in there with a show of... There are some, there are, there are some, uh, some uh, uh, Muslim folk around the town, absolutely, but uh, not quite as many as Fox News once claimed when they said that 100% of Birmingham was Muslim, which was news to me and everyone I know. Um, yeah. I, would, I think it's got a pretty high Muslim population relative to other air, urban areas. Oh, yeah. Britain. And I would imagine it's maybe 15%. Oh, it's actually slightly more than that. It's, it's about one in five, which is so way, yeah, way higher than the um, national average. But it's still, it's one in five. Yeah, exactly. It's not 100%. Right. It's definitely not 100%. No. no. But I heard it was like 100% of like Fox News or something, and they never lie, right? Yeah, exactly. Right? It's, it's, got, it's got news in the title, so it can't be wrong. Absolutely. <laughs> So we've got a little a piece of entertainment lined up for you guys. Um, it's to map on, do a little triangulation here between people appearing at MythCon and those who were included in a report that came out this week about the Alternative Influence Network on YouTube, which according to the author is in the, um, looks at appearances on shows and relationships between channels of those who are, let's see if I can find it, um, uh, political positions, that are I can't find it because it's super super tiny print. But basically, you have uh, political to kind of, position yeah. from mainstream to libertarianism and conservatism to aver avert uh, white nationalists. Yes. While so, compiling, so, well, yeah. Sorry, go ahead. Yeah, yeah. So basically, it's kind of like the center yeah. to the right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. So anyway, this this came out. It made many people on YouTube angry, <laughs> even though it's just based on observation. <laughs> It's simply observing reality and counting, and yet they're offended. 
Uh, but uh, Kevin, I think, knows some of these players more than I do because of his manosphere expertise. So Jonathan has the, the map up. And Kevin, if we're going to go through and try to name as many of these people that they're featuring as, oh, as we can. And then uh, Jonathan's going to check the map and give us a ding, ding, ding whenever they appear. So can you see my screen all right? Can you see the people? I can, but I'm going to have to squint because they're, it's quite small. Yeah. Okay, well, obviously, to... we've got um, Carl Benjamin in the top <clears> left. <throat> Well, um, you're gonna have to lock on your screen because if, oh, if right, every time yes. um, no, that's true, you're Leggingsman, right. Um, which I presume is your surname, Leggingsman. Yes, um, <laughs> uh, it, one of the Gloucestershire Leggingsmans. Yeah, good old yes. family. Famously, uh, yes. Yes, uh, the uh, every time he laughs, it's gonna you, you. You need to lock on your screen, Christy. Come on, I have, everybody. I have, I have, but um, you might not be able to see it. I don't know. I have locked on my screen. Okay. See it. Right. So there. it's locked. I'm locked on. I am. Okay. Lock okay. On. Okay. Now get the image up then. Okay. Right. There we go. Bossy. Jesus. <laughs> You're bossy. No, you haven't. Oh. Okay. Oh, I don't know what's so. Going on here. Right. So you've got fucking the prick of a sad. Right. Um. Then you've got who's that bloke? Oh, 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 he's definitely on the list. Oh yeah, absolutely. Yeah, so yeah, he's Jonathan, you got to jump homes. in on that. Okay. Oh yeah, yeah, he is. Yeah. I don't know who the bloke next to him is on the right. Smiley McWhite man. Yeah, I don't know him either. No. Oh, is that, yeah. is that Godless Spellchecker? Because um, mm, David maybe. Dave Smalley tweeted out a picture of himself wearing a shirt that said "Boats and Hose." Because he and uh, Godless Classy. Mm, he and Godless Spellchecker, he said in the picture, were in Milwaukee, I guess, maybe, or they were somewhere in front of of water, and they did a, a picture and and hashtag MythCon. So maybe that's who that is. Okay, maybe that's him. I don't know if he's on the list. Anyways. Uh, I don't think so because he's not a YouTuber. Okay. Well, next to that, is that, is that Roaming Millennial yeah. possibly? Yes, that see. is. It's quite a small image. Yeah, yes, there's Lori Chan. Yeah, yes, Roaming, the Roaming Millennial. She is somewhere on here, I bet. I just haven't seen her yet. But I bet she's on here. She has yeah, to she's on Yes, there, there is. Okay, yeah. Right. Medium, medium sized red dot. Whatever that okay. means. Uh, yeah, we've got. Then we got uh, some black guy. Mm -hmm. uh, and ding, that's ding. Not, yeah, that's not that's not me calling him some black guy. That's the name yeah. of the channel. Yeah, I'm not being slightly racist there. Um, Derek Blackman is his real name. Yeah, Derek Blackman. Okay, so he should, well, he should have gone with some black man then, surely. Yeah, that would have been a better name. But oh, anyway, it would have been so punny. Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. Uh, no, oh, then we've got a nicey, nicey shoe on head. Um, Sean, yep, she should be on here. Yeah, she's appeared on several times. And then we've got the 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 living token, uh, Bunty King. He's, I think Bunty King is on here. Yeah. Yes, he is. He's uh, and he's. Yep, uh, there he is. A small influencer, but uh, can widely connected. So yeah, that's four in the first line, and I don't know dick. about you. Yeah. Um, who's the ne okay next line then? I don't who know who that? the first woman is. I don't know who that is. I, no, I don't mm -hmm. know who that is, to be honest. I'm not sure. Uh, Angela bon Bonini. Yo, I, yeah, so I don't know her at all. Okay. Then we've got, oh, then we've got <laughs> um, Mr. <laughs> um, I'm definitely not trying to get laid at all by, you know, putting out a creepy message on the Twitters. Yeah. 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 I have that cloud. Have that cloud hanging over me. Yeah, that cloud. Cloud? Richard, Miss, that cloud carrier. Miss, Mr. Penis Carrier himself. Yes. <laughs> he's not on the list because he's not an influencer. He's not. He's no. not. No. He's well, he's an influencer in a rather more creepy manner, actually. Mm. Um, but yes, he's not uh, a YouTube influencer. Just not on, just not on YouTube. No. I don't know who the next two women are, actually. I think I Melissa don't... Chen and Karen Garth. Yes. Yes. Okay. Well, I don't think they're on there, are they? No, no, I'm not going to even look. Okay, who's the dude next to them then? I don't know who that is either. Do, 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 do. All these, well, that's the thing. All these white people look the same to me. I can't, <laughs> I can't tell the difference. The only person I know then is Jeff Holiday, and he's on that list. Yeah, Jeff Holiday is. I don't know who the black woman is between them yeah, mm. between, in the creepy white man sandwich there. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> uh, Oh, then we've got Chris Reagan, who likes to... Oh, ding, 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 ding. Definitely un on Unwittingly, unwittingly uh, parrot um, Bob's mantra, without realising it. Bob's mantra, of course, being uh, the absolute cornerstone of white nationalist 
quote unquote ideology. Why is it called Bob's Mantrum? Uh, a guy called Bob Whitaker uh, was a uh, formerly actually a, a mainstream politician, conservative politician who went full fash. Uh, and it's basically that it goes along the lines of um, was it uh, the, the liberal establishment want um, multiculturalism in white nations and only white nations and never for non white nations oh, and all right. that stuff. Um, right. Yeah, and uh, he basically almost word for word, although I believe it was unwitting in the sense that he wasn't aware that the no white nationalists quite talked in that way, but he was parroting. Bob's mantra, which is the absolute fucking cornerstone of uh, white nationalist identity. Anyways, uh, yeah, so fuck him. Uh, then we've got the absolutely adorable Boston's, Boston's Rose. Um, yeah, uh, pretty awesome. And then a slightly yeah. less fabulous red-haired woman. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Uh, yes, uh, 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 Mr. Jacqueline Glenn. Who I don't know. Is she on the list, Jacqueline Glenn? No. I'm, I'm checking. I'm checking. I, I don't think I, she's I, ever had those types on her channel. No, I, I, don't, I don't think she. Well, she's certainly done videos with Blair White, for instance. I know that much. Um, yeah. And of course, she's <laughs> she's played the rather uh, arcane game, which actually leads into she's got the soft end, the liberal end of this gradient of shit yeah. as far as i'm concerned she yeah, may not have been on the official list but she uh she's done lots of videos about how the left are really bad and she's done in the mm. time she said she was going to hold trump's feet to the fire she ah. donald trump. she's done two videos about donald trump in the time he's been president so yeah fuck you jacqueline <laughs> one um, per year nice yeah exactly and uh, well and she, uh, a person who's built their career a on plagiarism and b on uh, atheism uh, and she she won't do a, a video about how Donald Trump and his crew are religious fundamentalists trying to fuck America. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, Jacqueline Glenn is not on the uh, list of the uh, YouTuber influencers, though. Well, that's fair enough. Yeah, she doesn't yeah. do the type deal. But yeah, she's uh, as far as I'm concerned, she's on that gradient, even if she's not officially on the list. Mm -hmm. Anyway, I don't actually I don't know any of the next three okay, people. That's fine. We'll skip them. Yeah. Why don't we just go to the next line? I just want to. I just want to focus on uh, two across from Jacqueline Glenn. Glorious jawline on him. I'll give him yeah. that. I don't know who the fuck he is, but that is <laughs> that is a jawline that's that can Chad be down on me any day. Um, uh, who's the next guy? Black and white photo. It's too small. I can't see who he is. Uh, that is oh, do you know? Yeah. No, I don't know. Uh, okay. Stephen Knight, I think. Yeah, Stephen I don't know who that is. Oh, okay. I recognize I could, the name. Go onto the website and actually find out the names of these people, couldn't we? But never mind. <laughs> well, I have, I have, I have the speakers and the events like tab from MythCon open up, so I have like a kind of looking oh, okay. through. Wait a minute, is there on the panels and stuff like that? And they don't have a, like here's this photo and this is their name. No, it's so, like all their pictures are on their panels that they're a part mm -hmm. of and stuff like that. You have to scroll uh, so, up and down. Okay. Yeah, yeah scroll, scroll up and down. Kevin, you recognize Theron Mayer. She's in the middle with the black yes. shirt. Yes. Well, I was just going to say that I don't know who the woman is, and I don't know who the person is with, with Jordan Peterson there in the picture. Um, <laughs> I don't know who that is. But uh, fair play. Um, and then yeah, Theron Mayer, yeah, who's a fascinating character who I did a hangout with years ago now uh, when she was a right-wing piece of garbage and who seems to have gotten a lot better in recent times, mm -hmm. albeit mm -hmm. still a bit problematic as fuck, but whatever. Like, it's, yeah, it's fine as long as you're not being a total twat. Um, I, I, I've, I've respected Theron Meyer and her, like, change of character. And, and recently I haven't, like, hear anything that she said that to me is, like, outlandish. Is like, oh, my God, or why do you say that? No, I, I respect Theron Meyer for the most part. Yeah, she's, like, yeah, she's, she's um, changed for the better. And that, that, mm -hmm. that has to be applauded. Well done to her. Anyways, um... I don't know who the next two are. Who but they look like they're in a kind of photo uh, shoot for like some sort of band situation there. Mm -hmm. but I don't know who they are. Yeah, Perhaps I don't know either. I don't know. Um, oh, and then um, uh, allegedly um, uh, uh, <laughs> trying to sexually assault fourteen-year-olds at knife point behind a church. Monday, Matt. Oh, ding, 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 ding. He's on the list. He's not oh, a big surprise. influencer, but, oh, but he's connected. <laughs> yeah, he's he's on the softer end of it. He does videos about comic books and the Batman films. And, oh, he's just a nicey, nicey. Oh, yeah, and by the way, oh, the, don't, don't, don't punch the Nazis. The Nazis are okay. Freedoms of the peaches. Mm. Yeah. 
Ignore, <laughs> ignore the corpse of this young girl that I've definitely not got in the trunk of my car. Allegedly. allegedly. <laughs> Always allegedly. Um, um, uh, oh, then we've got... Uh, uh, so I've, by my count, I have seven so far. Yeah. Mm. We've, got the, we've got the worthless human slave of a cat and the worthless human slaves of uh, <laughs> uh, children. Um, together in a picture, which is which is odd. Um, I don't know why you sat on St. Nicholas's lap. <laughs> oh, who doesn't want to sit on St. Nicholas's lap? Everyone wants that like one gift that they never got. The uh, the miniature Oscar Wire Minimobile, the whistle. For me, That's... it was the Barbie sing-along mic where the radio frequency tuned in and you could like sing along to the radio. I, see, I just yeah. wanted something nice and simple, like a nine-inch black mamba. Is that so terrible? <laughs> really like? Jesus. <laughs> but you put that in one it's not a pet. You put that in one letter to Santa Claus, and they send you to see a therapist. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Kevin, how uh, Kevin, how old are you when you send that what letter? Uh, look, it, it doesn't matter. Okay, <laughs> it doesn't matter. That's between me and Saint Nick. Yes, Although, and the statute stop, of limitations. He, he, he <laughs> I'll be honest. The when it passes, part. he'll tell you. Exactly. When it's up, he'll tell it's, you. It's under a super injunction at the moment. It's complicated. <laughs> Let's move on. Next. Oh, and then, oh, then we've got, it's a me, a Mario. Yes. Um, Not an um, influencer, but he is basically funding the shitlords to come. Yes. He's, All these he's influencers to come. Funding a, a <laughs> slap suit uh, to try and silence opponents because the freedom of the come. peaches. In the case yeah. of Kerry. <laughs> he that, might sorry? not make it. Well, I said that he's funding all these people to come. And I said, or, you know, oh, she might have. try <laughs> to. That is, that is disgusting. <laughs> you should be ashamed of yourself. You are just mad that you didn't think of it. I, well, absolutely. Of course I, <laughs> exactly. I, I, was, I was talking to myself. I was giving myself yeah. a pep talk there. Um, <laughs> oh, then we've got an even yeah. creepier motherfucker who apparently looks like a fatter version of me, which is, uh, that yeah. I have to say, it's one of the most hurtful comments <laughs> anyone's ever left on the live videos. Uh, the court. <laughs> no, Kevin, he doesn't look good enough to be a potato with glasses. I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah, that's he doesn't true. rise to that level. That's true. Plus his hair always stays the same, whereas you're constantly, exactly. you're like a chia pet. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I am. You I are. Am. Oh, Kevin, chia pet. Oh, please, somebody make that out of clay. Oh, I will buy that. <laughs> make me a pet face. I will grow little um, alfalfa seeds or whatever it is, and then I'll put it as my avatar. You do that. I, I'm well, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> there, there were chia heads. There were chia heads. That actually was a product that they made. But I want it to look like Kevin. <laughs> yes, exactly. <laughs> Preferably pulling a face, <laughs> like mm. his current picture on Facebook. <laughs> or <Twitter>. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, I got if, all distracted with the chia anyway, pet. <laughs> I, who's the guy next to him, the ball bloke? The picture's quite oh, small. Uh, uh, not David Smalley, Clay Rutbridge. Oh, okay. I know. No, no. Uh, and yeah. he's, not on the, uh, he's not on the influencers list either. Neither yeah. is the quartering, which surprised me. Yeah. Well, I'm, he's relatively new on the scene. He was just a comic book Magic the Gathering twat until right. his harassing got out and now he's realized yeah. he's only just picked up on the grift you see so he's not mm. he's not on the radar of academic types yeah. i think yeah. the dates for this were like was it 2016 to 2017 or 2017 yeah, yeah. Oh, 2017? Yeah, yeah i see the dates right now Jan january 1st of 2017 to april 1st of 2018 so that's probably why quartering's not up there because i honestly yeah. did not hear the quartering until the announcement of mythcon 5's lineup so yeah that's he's like i say he's new to the grift scene yeah. Um, mm -hmm. So we'll have to wait and see. Uh, also, if, if, you... if this is done again in twelve months' time, he will undoubtedly, I think, be on that uh, little graph. Um, yeah, because I could just say methodologically, the sample she took included all of the Richard Spencer stuff and the Worski flare-up. Yeah. That, so that this this represents that time period. Well, some, yeah, someone was evolving. Someone was saying, "Well, why isn't Kevin on the list?" I, well, because I don't go on there agreeing with them. Right. Yeah. I go on these yeah, things exactly. to tell them they're talking shit. Actually, the difference. The point isn't you have a hangout with somebody. The point is you have a hangout and you fucking wank them off. That's the problem. This is the point. And actually, Jonathan, we should emphasize this point. You know that little section you read before about who is kind. So basically, it's measuring influencers, which is defined in the paper. 
Um, right. And it basically means you're trying to gather followers and put out a message and you're using your station as alternative news to the mainstream media. There's a whole thing in the book. Right. But uh, what counts again in this mapping? Uh, oh, they are promoting a range of political positions from mainstream versions of libertarianism and conservatism to avert right nationalism. So Kevin wouldn't fit in that range of political mm. position at all. So that's why he would he would not be on here. Period. Yeah, and I would also say I uh, I would quibble with her inclusion of destiny in that chart. I would I would I argue agree. that yeah. destiny should not be on there. But he yeah, also could... hosts a lot of people, so it yeah, could and, be and he's sort of a libertarian. Yeah, agreed. He is a sort of libertarian, but he's well, a libertarian that I can have a conversation yeah. with, or yeah, because I agree with one. He's a left yeah. libertarian, yeah. like not yeah. in the way yeah. actual left libertarian. No, he's not yeah. a left libertarian either. He's very, very pro right. capitalism. Yeah, he's a really center fair. libertarian because, like, if I think if I hear left libertarian, I'm thinking of libertarian socialist, and Destiny's yeah, exactly. definitely not a socialist. Yeah, absolutely. Oh, okay. Well, I'm thinking about like more um, people who are progressive who think we should have decriminalized pot and right. the police state should be rolled back. But they're also very capitalist in the states that I've experienced. But anyway, we're getting yeah. off. Track. Yeah. So okay. I just want to say, I, if I were to take the data, I would probably classify things a, a little bit differently based on my personal knowledge. And I don't agree 100. percent I would have a reasonable objection. Okay. To that. Right. Destiny. Really in Kiko. Come on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's for all you uh, sapiosexuals in the chat. Give you a little shiver of of soci um, social science there for you. Uh, yeah. So getting back from nice shivers to uh, creepy shivers. I don't know who the redheaded woman is. Mm, nope. Uh, no, that's a uh, 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 the, the, the Brittany Simon. I don't know. Never heard of her. Never yep. heard of her. Then we've got, oh, a boyfriend of Nicey McNice, who is uh, sort of tries to play Nicey McNice and said he was going to hold Trump's feet to the fire and hasn't said a word. Um, yep. Yeah, uh, uh, armored, quote unquote, skeptic. Um, I'm looking for him on the list. Well, and I don't I, think he and June are on there because they don't do it. Yeah, they're not. And they don't yeah. fight yeah. I don't think so. And then we've got, uh, oh, Creepy McCreepus and Mr. Smalley. Yeah, he's, he's not on the list, there. but it's no, not, he's, yeah, yeah, exactly. He won't be on the list. Uh, then we've got the most delightfully mustachioed gentleman in all of the world, Mr. Rowlands. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah excellent MD. Mm -hmm. Oh, then we've got, uh, oh God, Karen Strong, where to even begin? Um, <laughs> posted Chris Cowell and essentially uh, jerked him off, metaphorically, of course, and intellectually. Um, uh, yeah, uh, said that Sharia law was very feminist. I don't even know what? where to begin with that one. Uh, yeah, yeah, she's odd. Uh, also made a defense of domestic abuse, uh, which was fun. And it's done all manner of rape apologetics. Yeah, she is garbage. Oh, and of course, the pièce de résistance literally cried tears for Anders Bering Breivik, yeah. the Norwegian mass murdering terrorist. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. So she's uh, I don't know if she's on there. She does have a TV no, channel, she, doesn't she? Right. She does. she does, but she doesn't. She mainly does the honey badger stuff. She doesn't actually post mm -hmm. on her lot post videos or such on her channel much anymore. She doesn't go into mm -hmm. like white nationalism either. So okay, but you know, you're right. She, look, she, so she with with Chris Cantwell, she did. She did. Yeah, she did. So, yeah. She's not big. Mm -hmm. Okay. I think we're getting actually the only one person more that I know and two people that we that are okay we can mention and and, and name drop. So yeah, the last well, we one. Kept. Blair White, uh, a person I definitely I've, on there. I've talked to, uh, is mm -hmm. actual garbage. Um, yeah, she, yeah, she's a foul uh, person, uh, bigoted, in any number of fucking levels. Yeah, just just very unpleasant. Yeah, and then the last line, the only people I know are Sofane and Pat. Well, uh, whoa, 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 time, time, out, know some Yeah, I don't know who the person next to Blair White is. Don't yeah. know who that is, that dude. Mm -hmm. uh, then, can you stop moving the thing? Sorry, I was going to point at him, but then I realized that was a bad yeah, idea. The, and then the there was a lag. Up, yes. <laughs> uh, the avatar next to that is a guy called Declan Black. From, uh, oh! Um, I, I, well, and you, I know of him. He, he Basically, he's an ass licker for Carl. Yeah. Basically, yes, that's a perfectly good description. That's Declan Black? I believe Guy? so. Oh, okay. That's the avatar. I said. That's the yeah. avatar. Oh, right, okay. Uh, the bottom the left, is that, it looks like, I'm not sure it is, because I haven't seen his name connected with this, but is that Live Life 8072? It I looks like him. I don't know. What I line don't are you see looking at? The, the, is he the one with the banana? 
no, no, yes. no, that's Fat Pat from Fat uh, Pat the Sofane uh, poisoning the oh. wild guys. Oh, okay. oh, okay. So, right. Those, right. okay. So he's with okay. Look, well, okay. he looks. Tell him he looks like Live Life eighty seventy two, which is not okay. necessarily a compliment. Actually, um, I talked to Sofane, but I don't talk to Fat Pat. He's mad at me because I was promoting that picture of him with the Kekistan flag and calling people who were doing that alt light and all right, and he was mm. in it. And, oh but he no! Was also in it. Christy, yeah. don't present reality to people. That's so we we didn't get on very well, but I'm okay with Sofane. Yeah, I don't, mm -hmm. I don't know. But I don't have a big thing with Pat. Pat, he's mad at me more than I'm mad at him. So. Well, I don't know. Uh, uh, he's Patrick. I don't know who's next to him. I don't know who that person is. Yeah. Uh, or the person, that, the old guy who looks old. Yeah. I didn't... Um, and then Hunter Avalone, which is an interesting one. Uh, the final. Ooh. Picture. Yeah, he's well. I, apparently, he's now an atheist. But when I knew him, as it were, um, he was a Christian fundamentalist. Like an actual fundy fucking mental case, who's now apparently an atheist, but I presume is still as transphobic as he ever was. Well, um, I don't, and mm. all of their topics aren't really to do; they're more politics this year than. Anything, well, exactly, it's so. not the idea that, that they can call themselves mythicism when they don't talk about mythicism or really even atheism at all. It's ridiculous. Yeah, no, no, yeah, none of their panels is about that. Look, the myth now stands for the myth, the bullshit these guys spin as an alternative. Uh, reality to facts. That's what the myth is now. That's what it Mis means. Myth information conference is exactly. now. It's the myth information. It's their bullshit. Uh, by, and so, by the way, the, the bottom row, the first two people, they're Fat Pat and So Fane. Oh, okay. Well, I don't know them. So. Anyway, but Hunter Avalone, uh, just uh, final word, he's one of those people along with um, Stephen Crowder and Paul Joseph Watson who are incredibly transphobic, but are very, very comfortable dressing up as women. Huh. Right. Read into that what okay, you wish. So the last thing, because you talked about these squares, Jonathan. I just who, yeah, who's think. the big who's the big square there? I can't... Andy Worski. Oh, oh, okay. oh right, so, so Worski. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, so yeah, because William, the deep range. Mm -hmm. uh, and Carl well, Worski is the biggest, and then there's Millennial Woes. Well, no, Carl I th would think is second actually by the looks of it. So the way the chart works yeah. is, it charts as I said over that time period. Uh, cross appearances and platforming and networking between these channels. Uh, and in that time period, you know, Worski was very hot. It was the Kraut time, then it was Richard Spencer when he was trying to stay relevant, and then it just sort of became an alt-right channel. And Carl appeared on that and then other things. So it looks at uh, the connections, the cross connections between the channels. And the more time you have, the more times you have contact with um, people, uh, it's darker red. And the more people you have contact with, your square is bigger. Who's the very top name away from the pack? I can't read that one. Someone I've um, never heard of. Henrik? Yeah. Henrik Pelgrim? Oh, yeah. No, that person there. Palm, Palm I think Green. it's best with, yeah. I, th I, think, I think if they're on this thing, it's best if we don't know them, honestly. Mm -hmm. Well, I sort of pride myself on knowing them, if that makes sense. Like, it's my business to know them. I think you'll know everyone in the cluster. So inside, hello, stupid uh, computer. Yes, um, I, some, I, I, you, you've got uh, some black guy. You've got Coach Red Pill. You've got Lauren Southern, Stefan Molyneux, Crowder, Roaming Millennial, Black Pigeon Speaks, Worski, Faith Goldie, Jeff Holiday, Baked Alaska, uh, Millennial Woes, uh, um, Stick Six Six Six, Richard Spencer, and Brittany. Garipe, yes. Yep, he's down there too. Mm -hmm. um, in the distance is Kraut. Because he was obviously on the outs for this, Medicare. Yeah, well, that's uh, the thing. I'm crazy. As much as it may have changed in recent times to some extent, he was a part of this. I don't think you can deny that. Yeah. Well, he's certainly on the Islamophobia train, definitely. Yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. No bullshit makes an appearance. Dave Rubin is there. Blair White's there, yeah. Yep. Mm -hmm. Joe Rogan. Mike uh, Cernovich. Mike Prager, uh, Dennis Prager, and uh, Ben Shapiro. Is that? Mm, yep. Candace Owens, of course, Owen Benjamin. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's all the shitlords you know from Twitter. And then people on the on the edges must be like uh, Milo. He's obviously on the outs. Computing Forever is in the distance. Mundane Man is also in the distance. Um, but some of these names I don't recognize. But quite it's sad how many I do. Mike Enoch. Um, it's I mean, just, yeah, some of the ones Jeff, I know as well. Jeff Holiday, of course, as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I know of Blonde and Bellied Bees from Blanc's Frogger. I know of Wife with a Purpose. Well, like, well heard... that's well, you'll be interested to know, of course. Uh, she's also from Seattle. 
Oh, yes, I heard about that. Well, James also, I believe, is also on this like chart as well. Yeah. He lives in Washington State. So. He, does. he attended one of the colleges there, yeah. How many yeah, women Wazoo. can we name? Wife Tree of Logic. A tree of Logic, a Wife Without Purpose, Blonde from Belly of the Beast, uh, Blair White, uh, I think Brie, Brittany, uh, Brittany, Brittany uh, mm, uh, Rummy Millennials, if we haven't already mentioned her, um, maybe 10. Uh, Candace Owen, Lauren Southern's on there, of course, mm -hmm. if, we, if we haven't already mentioned her. There are probably about, what, 10 20? women? Yeah, I yeah. I'd, I'd have to actually do a proper count because it's hard on the screen. But uh, yeah, but it looks like maybe twenty five percent. Yeah, I mm -hmm. that sounds about right from my experiences. So, but uh, I can do an actual proper count. Oh, you not just want to nerd out with numbers? <laughs> That's what I you're do. interested in. There. Ooh. Ooh. Twenty six point four percent of these people were women. <laughs> of a statistical cross analysis of ages and distribution by geography. Ooh, talk nerdy to me, Kevin. <laughs> <laughs> hey, math was my favorite subject in school because I was actually good at it. So well, I um, think... well, nothing was the, my type favorite topic at school because I wasn't good at anything. So there we go. I liked uh, history and social studies, which is not surprising, and also languages and a little bit English. So, Drama wow. later on in high school is one of my favorites. Mm. Oh, 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 can I brag a little bit? Can I no. tell you something? Sure, I it's, learned? why not? You're hosting it. Yeah. Uh, I learned something about Mark Rylance. Now, for those of you who might not recognize his name immediately, uh, because he's mostly known for his work in the theater in Britain, mostly being uh, one of the directors of the Globe Theater, he was in Bridge of Spies. That did he win? An, a, I think he might have won an, an Academy Award for that. He's a very understated actor, really brilliant. But he was being interviewed, and they were talking to him about his experiences with drama growing up. And what I learned is that when Mark Rylance was a young boy, his family moved to Milwaukee, Wisconsin. And when he was mm. in the Milwaukee public school system, there was a very active drama group in his school. And so he got involved not only in performing, but in doing the sets and doing the lighting and doing the stage crew and the whole experience of, of being in in theater and when he graduated from high school in Milwaukee he went back to the UK to study and they said you know did you feel like you were behind your peers and he said well in terms of understanding the accents of Britain I couldn't distinguish between the accents of people from different towns but he said in terms of my experience with theater it was far deeper and broader than most of my colleagues because we don't have that there isn't that kind of active drama program in Britain. And so I just want to say um, I'm very proud that Wisconsin Public Education, before Scott Walker got a hold of it, was in part mm. a, um, a ground in which, you know, Mark Rylance got his experience and love of the theater and produced one, I think, one of the greatest actors of our time. So that's a nice little story bragging on my home state. True. But, true, but also fuck the Packers. So. Oh, hey, 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 don't fight me words. Tom's going to make you take Tom's in the chat. Coffee. He's going to have to work for you mm -hmm. about that. Mm -hmm. He's on oh. my hangout Sunday. This well, might be like turning into another diss track back and forth, you know, <laughs> live stream beef. Well, all, all, well, all I'd say to Tom is <laughs> internet blood sport. You want to start, Tom? I will send you bits of your goat piece by piece. No. Fucking post. Oh, oh. <laughs> oh, that's cold. That is cold. So. Well. I look, I, well, I don't, I I don't fuck around with sports, as, as you well know. I don't fuck around with sports. <laughs> Kevin, what has that goat done to you? Exactly. You bring an innocent look, the goat. goat is an innocent party. I, the, the goat will be uh, treated uh, fairly as much as I possibly can. But if I have to hurt the goat in order to get it, to, actually, this is going to a really weird place. Now, let's not. <laughs> because the goat isn't real. It's a, it's a total fabrication. Yeah, we should probably explain the goat lore. I don't know who wants to. Jonathan, are you? Well, actually, well, well, when you say goat law, you mean L O R E rather than like law about animal treatment, like actual legal. Yeah, yeah not like, like judicial procedures or what Kevin can legally do to the imaginary goat. <laughs> and well, I can whale, do anything to an imaginary goat. But and it's, whale, what I can do to an actual goat. I'm not doing anything to any goats, imaginary or real. In just, Wales just or in England? What about in Wales? I, uh, well, that's really, really <laughs> racist, and it's cheap, apparently, anyway. So, yeah, you've got that wrong. Very um, cheap? What? <laughs> I don't know. They must be barking. 
Yeah, I heard of what some people do with sheep, and I'm just going to not ask any further questions. But like the goat story, uh, basically, for uh, for those of you who are part of the happy endings and thus are the uh, fan for Kevin and Christy in the uh, uh, happy hours, I, last week, I think, it was in one of those hangouts where it basically it was like the, the usual fuck you to Kevin, fuck you to Tom, that back and forth. And then Matthew, who's also a patron of yours and a friend of ours, Christie's uh that he asked wait a minute why 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 this animosity between uh, Tom and Kevin and uh basically yeah so it was like is, is there Tom or someone uh, else it was Natalie I think it was yes, yes it was yeah, Natalie she said <laughs> yeah yeah kudos to her and she said like oh it's because like Kevin stole the it's a feud a long feud when like a long time ago Kevin stole the gold from Tom and so that started the story. Well, he, of knows. Kevin. he knows. Tom knows. I, it was, I was just, that was a shot across the bows. He knows I can infiltrate and pilfer any of his family. <laughs> <life then. laughs> I was just, just sending him a message with the goat. <laughs> just to let him know you can. Exactly. Yeah, well, oh, what's that? You reckon I can't steal all of your fucking caves? Think again. <laughs> so there we go. How did we get on the goat? I can't remember now. <laughs> well, you buy a drink first, surely. <laughs> yeah, at least. And offer it a place in your bed and maybe tickets to MythCon. Exactly. <laughs> feed, 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 it, feed it some hay. Feed it some hay. And then you can share its bed platonically even. Yeah. That's fine. Right after the VIP party. And I mean, there is that cloud over the goat, but I think it's fine. I think it's, in, yeah. Well, yeah, of course, there's a cloud over the goat. It's England. There's a cloud fucking everywhere. <laughs> it's the perpetual state of things. Exactly. All right. So, well, like speaking... the old Bill Bailey joke about was it when does the rainy season start in England? Well, it started in about the 12th century and has continued pretty much ever since. Yeah. <laughs> and I, one of the other things I love when he said when people ask, you know, what what's it like living in in Britain? He's like, I don't know. We have nectar cards. <laughs> <Exactly>. <laughs> It's all right. Um, okay, so after that delightful little break, I guess it's time to go back to screen sharing. And by the way, it's it's definitely moving into the after uh, bar here ourselves. Well, I, I'm going to have to nip it in eventually. We've got a guest, so I'll let you off. But there's a lot of mission creep lately, and this is supposed to be an hour long. God damn it! <laughs> <laughs> all right. Like to go I, I, I have. I'm doing nothing all day. <laughs> Um, but yeah, getting on. Actually, we've got a bunch of tweets, so we'll probably get through. While that. talking about creeps on a mission, yes. the water. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, were you actually uh, setting that up as a pun? I or wasn't setting that up, but I, I saw that face and I thought, "You creepy fucking prick." <laughs> I'm talking about the water right now. Brie Larson at all? She seems perfectly nice a human being. I uh, um, right. So, <laughs> like ignoring that. He, I just wanted to point this out because one, he's going to be at MythCon, and we, we've, yes. we've given him shit for his sexist views in the past, and this is mm -hmm. another example of one of his sexist, you know, like um, appeals or pandering. He put out, and, and I actually recommend if you go to Twitter, look this tweet up because he's getting ratioed, and the comeback, and the tweets are are pretty good. But he's mad mm -hmm. because he claims as a bored middle-aged mom out of the grocery store making a superhero movie, and he wants to react to the trailer. So there we go. She's not smiling, so she must be bored. And, of course, unless we're living in Victorian London, 28 years of age is not middle-aged. <laughs> yeah. yeah, exactly. <laughs> 28? Come on. That's yeah, that's ridiculous. Because if she's middle-aged, then basically so are you. Mm. The quarter, yeah, because he's isn't he like 26 or something? I don't keep track of these things. Fair hey, I'm 34. I'm it, 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 28 is middle age, I'm way over middle age. Then you're, you're racing toward late, you have being old, I guess. Like, once you get get in the it. coffin already, you fucking <laughs> dusty old bastard. <laughs> I mean, I have gray hairs already in my beard, and it's like, oh um, god. But uh, for me, well, I, I just, just like... noticed. I've looked at your avatar a lot over over <laughs> many years, and I've only just noticed upper center bulge. <laughs> yes. <laughs> okay, I didn't notice that before, but now now I've noticed it. I can't notice anything else. I should have cropped it better, maybe at least just for innocence or whatever. Exactly, you could have cropped it way better because we can only just see the tip. I want to see the full package. What's going on? Here? That's what she said. 
Well, just for you, Kevin, I, I can send those pictures. <laughs> oh, God. I, oh, God. I did once have a very, very aggressive homosexual man try to uh, come on to me on Twitter. That was weird. Because, I mean, I didn't want to be rude to him, but the wire, mm -hmm. he was, um, that was intense. <laughs> anyway. Just, yeah, some of the comments. Uh, wait, he thinks Brie Larson is middle-aged, so that... By that rationale, girls he considers young and dating age is like 15 and 16. Now, why doesn't oh. that surprise me? Yeah, exactly. Well, that's yeah. presumably, if, if he thinks that 28 is middle age, then presumably wanking over a 14 year old in a cartoon, it should be perfectly <laughs> fine because everything's scaled down in his world where yeah. everyone dies at the age of 50. Heavy Glitter <laughs> says, if you think she's middle aged, I dread to think what your views on age of consent are. <laughs> Um, I don't know if you guys can see this gift, but uh, yeah. oh. <laughs> oh. it's so good. Oh, can I, I don't know why, but I want, I want to hug that man. Not that man. That's, that's a shitting rhino. That man. I want to hug him and say, it's okay. I don't know what you're upset about now. I don't know what you're reacting to. It's going to be okay. And then yeah. I want to lick chocolate from his beard. <laughs> <That's all>. <laughs> <laughs> I might have to lock onto my screen again so everyone gets the full... Uh, Chocolatey beard looking man effect. <laughs> there he is. Okay. Just, just, just a nice, nice bit of sort of runny Nutella. And just, oh, beautiful. Stuff. I think it's nice how there's so much symmetry between his hair and his beard. It's like it's not quite the same, you know. Yeah, it's always a bit weird when you get because uh, it, it must be weird because I know people who've naturally gone like grey beard but kept the hair like their normal colour and it's not they haven't dyed it but it looks dyed as fuck. Mm. Whereas he's mm. gone. No, he's gone like full, full kind of Santa situation. Yes. Nice. Yeah, just like Soli owns it. No, no, mm -hmm. no, like just for men and whatsoever. And then, I, I, yeah, I love that one. <laughs> it's just like, I, I, even without seeing the video, I'm sure that's what the video <laughs> essentially is like. Yeah. Well, and all the... I'm saying is this: this is Jordan Peterson's lecture in a GIF. Yeah, and that's kind of what they say. Uh, they Omar says for those who didn't watch the video, it's basically just this. Gif, but sadder. Fair enough. Um, FFS, uh, just admit you hate women already. It will save everyone else a lot of time. Yeah, that's mm -hmm. well. That's the basic gist of it, isn't it? Every time a woman or a black person does anything, ah, oh, the the white men's. Oh, it's pathetic. Lee Boone says that look on your face in the thumbnail is a look on my face while watching your video. Mm hmm. So yeah, these just they just <laughs> they just keep going. Yeah, it's being milk. <laughs> this asshole again. <laughs> <laughs> so good. Yeah, mm -hmm. reaction video. All right, so there's that was that that one. Um, yeah. So anyone, any last closing words on the quartering before before we move on to Richard Carrier? Um, dear the quartering, shut up. Dear the quartering, you if you really, really, really want fat material with underage girls that are sexually expl explicited or are sexually objectified, there's etchy anime. There's too many that I can list. No, <laughs> if he wants to masturbate over pictures of underage girls, please go to the police. You're a danger to but There's that too. Right, right, right. Yes. Yeah. Uh, all right. So, uh, Richard Carrier, you know, we, we brought him up in the last half. Penis hour. Carrier! <laughs> he, he is, we're still going back and forth on Twitter. We're still arguing this. So, because, the, the, dick, the dick is going back and forth. Okay. Yeah. Continue. No matter how many times people try to explain to him that he is misusing his status as a speaker and his, uh, the power that, so he has all, he, he claims all these women have a, have contacted him about being his date. He gets to then pick. So if you are picked by Richard Carrier, you are already in an asymmetrical power position. And now he's going to give you all this free stuff. And what if you mm -hmm. decide you don't want to sleep with him knowing what his expectations are and knowing that he picked you and that he's just given you this, this basically free access to the VIP package from MythCon to meet other speakers and to be with the coolest people in the conference. And he doesn't yeah, get exactly. the abuse of power. Yeah. Well, yeah that, if you, would, who's who would be skeezy enough to actually kick that person out and say you can't even sleep in the bed then? 
get out. <laughs> they turned him down at that point. But one of the things he said that I thought was the most ridiculous, and really go to his feed, because he just, mm -hmm. it's like, he uses all 280 characters in every single tweet, and if you reply to one uh, to, with one thing, he'll give you three and like three tweets in reply. It's ridiculous. But this was to me, um, as, aside from the ridiculousness of his lame excuses and to almost willing, uh, un, um, with a purposeful unwillingness to understand the points people were making, is this tweet that he made to uh, Chrissy Ossidy. So she basically said something along the lines of she doesn't really want to be around him in Milwaukee. And um, his reply, okay, maybe I, I can, sorry, I wanted to go up, but I guess that's where it starts. If I open it up, I'm not sure where she says her thing. Um, maybe we do this. Um, so you don't know that that's what she said. Sorry, I'm trying to think. She <laughs> says here, I, yes. That's what she said. No, it's what I don't know. She said, uh, I just want him to stay away from me in Milwaukee. He said, are you going to be at MythCon? Because I'll gladly, uh, yeah, avoid you if so. Your resistance to evidence and logic and commitment to mythology and ideology over critical reasoning makes you dangerous. Now, this is a guy who was pushing what? the idea that Jesus didn't exist against all critical scholarship yeah, up exactly. until now. Ridiculous. He's like the only person left who is actually a mythicist, yeah. Yeah, and... Mm -hmm. And, and he called Chrissiosity. Chrissiosity. Dangerous. Also, he, I quite like the fact that, and you know he doesn't necessarily mean it in this way, but does Richard carry a not a lot of resistance? Oh, you mean like... <laughs> yeah. Just say, I'm just... Allegedly, he's not a fan of resistance. That's all I'm saying. Allegedly. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, and this was just... I mean, I thought this was entirely, entirely out of order. Uh, and I wanted to, it, this, there's so much in that we could go over, and because we're already over time, and we've got Peterson to get to, I don't know if we want to go into the, because no, his but I just, so I long, just but. Yeah, I think it's just worth uh, mentioning that Mythicist Milwaukee really don't even mind guests having a go at other guests and saying, you're dangerous. Uh, well, they did. They, no, they did respond when like Mike Rowan said that he was going to flip her like the bird and just walk off oh, the stage. Or when Dusty Smith was that's gonna dance. Don't forget the dangerous dancing move by Dusty Smith. Oh, yeah, 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 that's fine. That, yeah, yeah. Da dan dancing is dangerous. Mm. Being in a really, really, like you say, asymmetrical power situation with a guy with mm, alleged previous behavior in this regard. That's not dangerous. That's fine. I, I couldn't resist. Can we go over this little exchange, this part here? Mm -hmm. So I yeah. put out a poll, and I stripped all of the mythicist stuff and so you, so you stripped on a poll. Go on. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> um, it was just another Wednesday night for me. Uh, and it says, you learn a featured speaker at a conference, just posted to Twitter, offering a free conference ticket, access to an after party, free drinks, and space in his bed in exchange for being his date that day and night. Is this appropriate professional conduct? And I had 185 no! people. <laughs> now, I, I, I won't reveal how I voted because it's a secret ballot and I, I, I care about the <laughs> No, no, I ain't going to admit it. I voted no. Yes, as did 90% of the people who took part. Um, and this was, again, it wasn't about, it was just a scenario. It was just mm -hmm. an ethical question about the scenario. Is this appropriate? And clearly... The random, you know, just a convenient sample of people who follow me on Twitter and, and those people who retweeted it and the people who saw it, whatever. That's a convenient sample. But mm -hmm. what uh, Carrier says in response, uh, I'm trying to find it. It was in the last one. What's, on. what's, what's Dickie's response? What's he been up to? Yeah, right? I'm, <laughs> I'm afraid if I go back, it's not going to go where I want. But um, Go back. Always go forward, Christo. <laughs> <laughs> you learned from the past. Um, he replied basically saying everybody who took part, maybe, maybe hit show more replies because it might have taken a minute. Yeah, it probably is down there. Eh, and of course, what does it not do? It doesn't show me any more replies. But he basically. Well, they're more replies, but maybe you have them muted. Oh, that could be. Um, he basically says that uh, everyone who took part was a complete idiot. Oh, do you, um, was this it? Yeah, this was it. Only in your echo chamber. Nine out of ten irrational people with standards contrary to every industry who can't produce any intelligible defense of their position is not an argument in your, fa in your favor. He, he knows that all of those people are irrational because they're so <laughs> irrational. 
Yes. <laughs> that, that in of itself is not an irrational response to just declare these people irrational, even though you literally don't know anything about them at yeah. all. Look, I say it's a convenient sample um, in the thing. It says a convenient yeah. sample shows that people overwhelmingly think the share a bed platonically even was unprofessional, nine out of ten. Yeah, and you weren't you... suggesting this was an absolutely scientific fucking result. No, 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 no. Yeah. And, and and even in my echo chamber, it's still an ethical, it's a, it's a question of sexual ethics. And when he wrote uh -huh. his apology for when he got booted out of the speaker's con and skepticon, he said he was going to remain engaged with the community on issues of sexual ethics and leadership. And, and he yet, was lying. Yes. he was lying. Yes. Based on his behavior to me, because all of the people who are trying to explain the problematic nature of how he is abusing sexual ethics in a leadership position, he attacks like this. And he wants to talk about Chrissyosity, rejecting evidence and, and all that other stuff. Chr Chrissy, uh, Cr Christy even, um, he, he, he can't be the irrational one because the nine out of the ten people are irrational. He said so. Mm. <laughs> Anyone who disagrees with him is irrational. That's yeah, a racist yeah. position. I can um, think of a I, I can think of a reason to just like this dis disregard these results because it's all from your echo chamber. Yeah, yeah, yeah do it again. Re replicate the study. I would be surprised if you got much variation. It might be eighty-eight to twelve percent. You know, it might be around that. But if you get anything close to fifty-fifty, I would be shocked because you know what? Most people recognize that's not professional conduct. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Unless you're like a teenage boy who's like, yeah, I would totally use that to get laid, maybe. Well, but I think you get better of teenage Richard, boys. Well, Richard Carey, I think, is that a taste of the Sargon fan base type situation where they, they are 15 year olds, whether mm. literally or you know, mentally or, you know, emotionally. That's exactly where they're at. So to them, this isn't a bad thing at all. To, to them, mm. this is a perfectly reasonable situation. No, wait, um, if you go and look at his feed, it's an exercise in psychological projection, uh, yep. shutting out people and feigning ignorance at very obvious concepts. So intellectually dishonest, motivated for very obvious reasons, by a very obvious reason, in my opinion. He doesn't also, want to stop doing this. He doesn't want to stop using these kinds of things to access sex. And people who criticize him for it are threats to that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Don't tell me I'm wrong. How dare you? Yes. On a slightly different note, I've just gone onto my audacity, and it says disk space remaining for recording six hundred and seventy hours and five minutes. How much <laughs> fucking recording do they think I'm going to do? Six hundred and seventy hours, you well, mentalists. Kevin, in case it you have that, it's a baked Alaska backup plan. Oh. <laughs> they give you a nine hours train out of a parking lot. They fucking want to have you back on that. And nine hours of him <laughs> mostly walking around Los Angeles, not talking, and then boasting the about, uh, and then boasting about how successful he is two weeks before he's forced to move back to ba to Alaska into his mom's fucking basement. Brilliant, well done. So, uh, yeah. So, just again, entertaining feed. Uh, so, moving from baked Alaska over to a different kind of going from baked Alaska to. Uh, totally not baked uh, Ontario. Can Canada. <laughs> yeah, going from baked Alaska to uh, sober poutine. <laughs> uh, I wanted to highlight this because you know, Mr. Free Speech dude um, has is, it's come out that he threatened to sue somebody for calling him a misogynist. Now, this is an article we covered well, it wasn't here. Yeah, it wasn't just um, it wasn't just her, was it? It was Vox that she was writing it, and mm -hmm. uh, her university possibly as well. Yeah, her university yep. as well. Cornell. Yeah. Right. So um, the person that uh, is is being menaced here is Kat. Uh, was her Kate Mann? Where is her name? I want to make sure I get it right. It's either Mann or Manet. Yes, or she did the uh, revision of the concept it's, of patriarchy to. It's what? also as if he's got like a problem with powerful and in, intelligent women. Oh, definitely. <laughs> yes. Who, or, who criticize him too. Yeah, exactly. Or am I reading too much into that with the brutal male dominance? Mm. Yes. <laughs> again and again, feminists want brutal male domination. That's definitely a Peterson. Oh, Jordan Peterson, you fucking prick. This is this is this is 
that's why the feminists seem to be so fascinated with the Middle East and men of the Middle East and Sharia law because they want that same treatment for oh, them. God, it's like and he's they... in the room. Oh, that's, that's beautiful. <laughs> that's <was> beautiful. <laughs> I'm here all night. Thank you. Yes. So Kevin was right. Kate, man or man, one of the two. But she developed this notion of patriarchy um, more clearly, no, no, I'm sorry, of misogyny more clearly that talks about uh, directing anger, hatred, resistance at women who break traditional feminine norms and roles. So it's not that mm. when you're a misogynist, you just blindly hate women, although there are those kinds of misogynists in the incel community. This is um, mm. men who accept when women um, operate within a traditionally feminine sphere and sort of reward them for that even, maybe even giving them speaker, they, they can rise uh, in a limited way in a community to tell other women they shouldn't do those kinds of things. Uh, and although, although Jordan Peterson's a sort of weird mixture because he sets it up so they can't win. Because like you say, I think he does apply that where if, if you are traditionally uh, feminine, he will respond positively to that. But he also does the thing of, you know, oh, maybe women shouldn't be allowed to wear makeup in the workplace because mm -hmm. the rape accusations or some nonsense, you know what I mean? Like mm -hmm. he sets it up so you can't win. We yeah. don't know the rules. We don't know all these rules. Any it, it, things happening behind closed closed doors, and the rules are just made up. It's insane. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it's just made up, right? Um, well, I know, I know now. I now know if I want to see if I want someone to read over some Jordan Peterson lines, I know who I'm going to to record <laughs> that for me. No problem. He auditioned. See, that's why he wanted to get on air. He yeah. wanted to do his Peterson audition. Yeah, leggings. Man. Well, that's fair enough because if if I had that Peterson talent, if I could do the voice, I'd do little else. I would literally walk around <laughs> in my daily life with that, and people would people would fucking knock me the fuck out for being a twat. Well, you know, <laughs> I had uh, some uh, at some point in the past bought a puppet B and called it Jordan B Peterson. <laughs> <laughs> so if you wanted Jonathan to do the dialogue and then for me to do the puppeting and record it in the camera, you could have that. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> oh, <laughs> I'll, put, I'll post a picture of Jordan B. Peterson in the group, in the Facebook group, if people remind me. But, uh, yeah, so she had sure. this, uh, man had this notion of uh, misogyny that was more about reacting against women who want to break those traditional norms and was talking about it in a Vox article and mentioned Jordan Peterson because he's a good example. And he mm -hmm. wrote, um, basically, they he wrote to threaten to sue her for defamation because she said true things about him. Um, now, he hasn't followed up, apparently, but uh, he talked about vicious libeling by referring to him as a misogynist. Um, and it would impugned his honesty and integrity. The man who has multiple times been on stage talking about women wanting brutal male domination thinks that he's being defamed, uh, which is, there's a pattern of, of people who claim they are for spe speech when it comes to their rights, but then use tactics to intimidate and stop the speech of others, like his list of academics that he wanted exposed. And he's got oh, these patterns. Yes. He's got these patterns of trying to silence people. He doxed students who were criticizing him. Yeah. Right. This, if he was, a, if he was what Sargon and the rest considered an SJW, he would be their number one target right now. Yeah. Exactly. With with also like the if he's like the same kind of person that has like the books and has the um, reach that uh, Jordan Peterson currently has, but he was a SJW. Yeah, he would be like number one enemy of like the the skeptics. I agree. Yeah, he's yeah he's. Uh, it also says in the article about him. Um, uh, it says something about he's in the actual letter to. Um, uh, to this uh, manner or man or whatever her name is, mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. uh, uh, he will do anything in his power to um, protect his professional credibility or something. And I thought, well, that ship has sailed. That, oh yeah, that horse has bolted a long, long. time ago. <laughs> yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. And um, of course, I think I saw. Uh, no, I didn't. I know I saw people on Twitter reacting to this by tweeting at him. Hey, Jordan Peterson, you're a misogynist. So. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and That's I thing, again. my Twitter handle. <laughs> To read the GOP is a rape culture and Jordan B. Peterson a misogynist. Well, exactly, mm. yeah. and that, that, as, as I said earlier, don't don't speak truth to them. They don't like that. Yeah, yes, that's silly. <laughs> Facts hurt. Ooh, exactly. Yeah. Observation. I'm not a, I'm not a misogynist, even though I regret how nowadays you cannot hit women without social repercussions. How oh. dare you say that? Yeah. <laughs> you went a bit German there. <laughs> 
<laughs> no, 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 no. And you know what? It actually helped the character. I think it, it took two different plays. <laughs> That was a, that was a, that was it was a brave but a good acting choice. Well done. <laughs> brave and you should see the priceless the kind of my niece of the cost of the color. Okay, that was just racist. That was just racist. <laughs> Outrageous. I apologize. I apologize to Mariana in the chat. I apologize to all my German friends. I apologize well, I to Ruben. You weren't speaking German. <laughs> Yeah, I don't know what that, I don't know what it was, but that wasn't German. No. Yeah, that I don't was... think it offended anybody. It's okay. <laughs> I'm joking. You offended plenty of people. <laughs> well, that's all I have, and we're only 20 minutes over. And I know Kevin doesn't want too much more mission creep, so I'll just do a call out to see if either of you had anything else you wanted to bring up or expand upon before we wrap up the show. Uh, oh well uh, with brexit uh my country yes, is exactly. literally fucked oh yes yeah. so i think it's so, worth talking about this because there was yeah. a thing that happened in salzburg and i missed it and i'm hoping you can give me the skinny on it yes there was a, a, a leaders meeting in salzburg uh, because currently austria is the president uh, has the presidency of the uh, european union because uh, they take it in turns each year each country gets to take it in turns as the president country of the european union which basically means they get to host you it doesn't really mean a lot it's just a sort of form formal thing anyway so salzburg a city in austria uh, they had a meet a leaders meeting where all the leaders of the nations and the leader of the european commission and so on got together uh, and amongst other things they were talking about brexit uh, which is britain leaving the european union um and uh, the prime minister theresa may's checkers plan checkers being the country resident of, of the prime minister but it, the, it's now given its name to this plan she had for the, uh, exiting the european union uh, was soundly rejected as i predicted it was the second i fucking heard about it because it was an unworkable fudge of a situation where um reality meets the um uh, the, the rubber of reality meets the road of uh, conservative right wing shit baggery um so yeah the country's now fucked it looks like we're going to get a no deal brexit or possibly a second mm. referendum or possibly a general election or possibly some sort of mad max thunderdome situation i don't quite know <laughs> but the prime minister tried to tough it out this today with a statement uh which and she tried if you get a chance look at the last five seconds of it because it's hilarious uh, she does like a really serious face at the end as if she's some sort of fucking gangster mafia boss and then just, just walks away. And it's the most <laughs> embarrassing thing I've ever seen from an elected representative outside of everything Donald Trump's ever said. But other than that, the most embarrassing thing I've ever seen, it was pathetic. She must have really, really tried to practice that. And it came across as it would do as a, a middle-aged white woman pretending to be really hard when actually she's just a petty functionary who's elevated way above anything she's actually capable of uh yeah my country is actually fucked <sighs> yeah can i just say though i mean i smiled when you said the thunderdome thing which you can't hear anymore, but I did smile. and then though i pictured Theresa may dressed like tina turner from the video from the mad mm, yeah. and you know actually if you just pick her picture her no matter what face she has on but dressed like mm. tina turner in that in the mad max video but she's she's starting to look quite ill she's looking more like tina turner after the smack got hold of her to be honest mm. that's that's, that's mm. more of it. ouch okay well, i don't know that tina turner phase of life i didn't see in the movie but um all right but yeah so anyway just want to say that if you put it in the terms of thunderdome at least it's slightly more entertaining while you while the ship goes down while the titanic sinks. well yeah i mean i say that humorously but i mean there, there's talk of like having medicines stockpiled and oh don't worry there mm. will be adequate amounts of food mm. yeah, yeah. So, i mean oh. are we are we now a third world nation all of a sudden so when can i happen? can i ask oh yeah when we, we decided to shoot ourselves in the yeah. bollocks for no fucking reason thanks carl mm -hmm. thanks nigel thanks you kip yeah exactly brilliant uh, when did it go from all of their great promises it was going to be the easiest deal ever oh, 350 yeah. million pounds a week for the nhs it's going to be fantastic to don't worry, there will be ample food. A British minister, a British minister of the government, actually said that, as if we're supposed to go. Oh well, that's reassuring. Thanks. I didn't realise mm. we were now what some sort of third world nation now. I sudden. think it's uh, developing. <laughs> yeah, the, the third world is still very like a Cold uh, War frame of reference for. I mean, this is from international relations that I study, but yeah. yeah. 
the under, yeah, to underdeveloped fair, and developing, and then the to be fair, the, to be fair, right? The uh, the the happy hour is not an international diplomatic fucking study or something. It's not you say like... <laughs> with three people from three different countries on the hangout. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, we all understand <laughs> what I mean when I say third world. Yes, it's an outdated phrase. Okay, fine, but you understood what I fucking meant by that. Yes, but There's I'm no just, one yeah, I'm yeah. doing. I'm reading the consciousness There's only one Earth. <laughs> is he talking about a third Earth? <laughs> what on Earth is he talking about? <laughs> I'm mad. Like, no, you understood what I meant there. Oh, and I'm also, some of those it. nations, some of those nations aren't even fucking developing, really, are they? They're being shit on by massive powers. So that even that's fucking wrong. No, yeah, no, yeah. It is. So there's the underdeveloped countries. Those are the ones you're thinking of. Then there's developing countries, and then there's the developed world, because there isn't a second world. The first world was the West. The second world was communist states. The third yeah. world was basically everyone else. Well, I still else. think, to be honest, I still think the second world uh, thing applies, because the Eastern European nations are still lagging vastly behind. Even uh, in uh, we've seen in Eastern Germany, what well, was East Germany, the GDR. Um... Oh, Kevin, you still there? Kevin? Yes. Uh, you dropped out a little bit. Hello. Yeah, we lost. Yeah, yeah, yeah well, just, well, I'm just saying, what East East Germany still hasn't caught up with the rest of Germany, and that's been a unified nation for 25, 30 years now. Mm -hmm. So the second oh. world, I think the second world theory still applies. Well, look, if you're very attached to your Reagan foreign policy, cold world, um, no, 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 don't try and tag this in with the actual <laughs> fucking policy involved here. It's a description <laughs> of on the ground reality. Which is uh, still true. The nations of the former COVID, uh, Soviet bloc are still very different economically, culturally, than the rest of uh, Western and Central Europe. Right, but it's third world true. became a, basically a pejorative term to mean well, it white be, places with brown mean. people. Well, and that's why they changed that. it to the developing world. There are loads of white countries that are shitholes as well. I'm not being racist. <laughs> I'm just being generally anti-human. Now you're talking about people like, pretend they're your soul. You know, when I, I was am, growing up, we used it and just meant insulting. I, I am an equal opportunities misanthrope, okay? <laughs> there you go. <laughs> uh, but back, that to back, to the, back to the dumpster fire that unfortunately is the future international trade of, and movement in your country. Um, what would a second <laughs> referendum do? What are you going to do, untrigger the trigger? You're going to put the toothpaste oh, back? Oh, yeah, well, they, yeah, they've already said that at any point um, before actually leaving, we can um, essentially put the process into reverse, yeah. We can, uh, you can extend the uh, negotiation period would be the initial step, um, uh, as long as the other 27 agree, which they would. There's no, because they don't want this. This is economic fuckery on a massive scale. Uh, it's more, but it's bad for us because we're losing 26 rich partners. They're losing one rich partner. Um, but even so, it's still fuckery for them. They don't want it. So they would extend it. We'd have a second referendum. There's no no doubt at all which way that would go because people have now seen the reality of it, and it's just horrific. Um, oh, then, I'm not sure. I'm sure, I'm sure the, if there is a second referendum, it will go the opposite direction because, remember, after the first referendum, people actually Google Brexit. Well, no, exactly. No, that's what I mean. It, there's no doubt it would go with remaining in the EU because... Yeah. Exactly. People, people had this idea that it was going to be really easy. It was going to be fast, and it's just ridiculous. The lack of realism in any of this from the from the uh, Leave side was remarkable, um, which I knew at the fucking time. I knew it was a lot of bollocks. Mm -hmm. Why would you make it easy for people to leave? It doesn't make sense. Well, it doesn't suit anyone's interest for that to happen, and it doesn't suit the interest of the European Union to lose one of its major financial backers. So why would exactly. they for anyone to leave? Um, uh, and, and of course, they've got to look after it from the perspective of their future arrangements. They've got to make it as uh, the best they possibly can because they're going to remain in the European Union, of course. Um, uh, and so now people see the reality of it. It's gone from being, oh, it's going to be the best thing ever to, well, we're going to we're building up stockpiles of medicines just in case. I mean, <laughs> are we going to war? The fuck? Yeah. Like, there will be yeah. a blockade outside yeah. of like Southampton. Well, no, the basic problem is this, uh, the European uh, Medicines Agency, which you have to be a member of the European Union to be a part of, uh, we have, mm. uh, we're a member of, but when we leave, we don't have a reciprocal medicines trading agreement with the European Union. Uh. Uh, so if we have no deal, we literally don't know how we're going to be able to buy medicines from the continental companies like Pfizer and Bayer and various other mm -hmm. huge um, uh, 
medicines companies, we're slightly fucked. So we've been stockpiling those because, you know, this is such a great thing for Britain. So, yeah, the people of Britain will vote overwhelmingly to remain. Now, I'm not yep. saying that will actually happen because the Tories are massively divided on this. But what I do know is that even if there is a deal, there's no way it gets through Parliament. Mm. So we're stuck with a no-deal situation, and that could lead to anything. Look, I mean, I listed off the thing. It could mean a change in government. It could mean a new election. It could mean a second referendum. It could mean a total collapse of uh, the Parliament as it is. It, it, mm. Who knows? It's just a total stalemate and a fuck-up. So yeah, I just I just want I just wonder if will British politicians, will British and Britons now listen to experts after all of this? Well, it's, well, it's fuckery because they were going about oh the, the experts don't know what they're talking about, and but then would cite their own experts. Uh, to be yeah, so I was in the UK um, uh, around the time it was being debated, and then we talked to people afterwards. And one of the things that did come up was when, for instance, BBC Four would put on people to talk about the future of Brexit. They'd bring on two economists who would say completely different things because you know what? Predicting the future is hard and it's very impossible to do in some situations. And people were getting information from experts, but the experts were disagreeing. And um, it was it was not very clear what the implications were. And I think the two the process has shown that the implications were not fully thought out or really looked at in policy detail, like what would happen with flights, what would happen with medicine. I think if these kinds of things were talked about, it would have been different, but there were bigger, more vague questions about the economy and movement of people and immigration and control of the borders. And you have to remember the Brexit debate was really about an anti-immigration sentiment, the feeling that we're an island and we have too many people and we can't oh, yeah. have more people coming on. So it people was... were willing to take economic hits if they had their... They they felt were strong borders, but what yeah, they was, ended up getting was, was neither. Yeah, it was about xenophobia, pure and simple. Yeah, as yeah. far as I'm concerned, for the most yeah, part. Exactly. But now it's about bigot. money. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Although there are still some people, and the, the the same people who were for it in the first place, the logs of Farage, who literally want Brexit at all costs. Mm -hmm. They don't give a fuck yeah. if it cripples the country economically, politically, diplomatically. They don't care. They just yeah, want to get rid of the foreigner. Like for Carl. It's ideological. Yeah, yeah they just the want to get rid of Johnny Foreigner. They don't yeah. want foreign people. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and of yeah. course, in, in Carl's case, you know, he's a British nationalist, which means he he's not a white nationalist because he doesn't want to kick brown people out of the UK. He just wants to stop all immigration so they always stay a permanent minority and they can't threaten his his white culture, his his idea of white culture. <laughs> I, yeah, exactly. But I mean, I don't want to be too down on Britain, but there's so much about British culture that I'd be more than happy for immigrants to fucking destroy. Like mm. what? Like much of what Carl and Dankula and uh, uh, fucking Nigel Farage like about Britain. This idea, this this farcical notion of Britain as this liberal bastion, this farcical notion that Britain is some sort of a nation of the fair play and the free speech. It's bollocks. But how Winston, would immigrants... Winston, yeah. Churchill, Winston Churchill, right, uh, is lauded as one of the great Britons of all time. He sent British army troops to shoot, uh, including uh, 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 killing several, uh, miners at Tonopande. They were striking miners, mm. and he sent the British army in to fire upon them, live rounds upon them. The idea that Britain is this great fucking mm -hmm. bastard is nonsense. It's a thin veil of civility. Well, it's like whitewashing the Civil War. You have yeah. people, yeah, even exactly. hundreds of years later... Who want to say it's about states' rights? It was the states' rights to keep slaves as legal, yeah, you know, as a legal practice. That's mm -hmm. what they wanted. Um, but yeah, I don't know how that. I, I don't know that immigrants could really do that. No, no, I'm not. I'm, I'm not suggesting they, that I'd be happy with it completely. Good, but there's there's much of that kind of middle class bullshit. And when I say mm -hmm. middle class, I don't mean that in the American sense. I mean that in the genuine British sense. It's kind of middle and upper class bullshit oh, okay. about British society that I despise. That if immigrants want to come in and completely rip up, I'm fine with that. Or if the native people, I would hope, would fucking grow a spine and do so, but they don't. Mm -hmm. But you know, and but the kind of um, political ideology that Carl and uh, Paul Joseph Watson come from. If you have people who are integrating yeah. and winning British Bake Off, then everything is rigged to be about multiculturalism. So they don't want them <laughs> represented. They don't want them integrating. Yeah, they, of course they, they fucking they don't. Do. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's not about integration. It's never about integration. It's all right. they don't want people who look and act differently to them. Yeah, because it's like if like the people who look and act differently become the new normal, what does that make me? 
And they're yeah. definitely afraid of that. Yeah. And also, Carl's totally talking shit about his granddad being black. I think that's been <laughs> proven now. He was totally full of shit. A lie. Oh, Sargon Lyne. Lyne. How the, I never imagined that. Huh. Yeah. <laughs> well, um, yeah. I'm, I know. For me... Can we talk about something vaguely yeah. happy to end the show on? Because my existential Please. crisis about the country I live in and have to live in uh, sinking into the fucking morass... Uh, can we talk about anything else? Look, we got, if like, it's something, look, I, 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 I have actually um, faith in the British people to pull their heads out of their asses at the last minute oh, because God. you guys have done this in the past where you've done a major international about face and retreated. You had a lot of practice under colonialism and how to take the L. Christy, you I guys had a lot of practice in taking the L, I, and I believe in your ability to take the L on this and stay in the EU. I think the British people I, will, do, will demand a referendum and, and everything will happen around February and it'll be a last minute pullout. I, uh, well, that's what she said. Um, I, <laughs> I, love your up, I love your optimism, uh, but I also deeply, deeply disagree with your optimism. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's okay, because you're British. <laughs> yeah, exactly. But I, 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 oh God, it's just. So uh, we need a happy story. I don't know if uh, we want to throw anything. Uh, into... Well, yeah, because like uh, Kevin, you thinking about like your country, I'm thinking about my own country, and I'm sadly kind of like almost in your head spaces. Like I'm, I'm oh, okay because in Germany, there's just been sort of you know weird neo-Nazi race riot type stuff. So yeah. Oh yeah. Um... Uh, we're going to realize that the early part of the 21st century was a sort of rise of anti-democratic forces within democracies and how we handle it going forward will determine whether or not we have a democracy in 100 years. I don't want, I can't um, yeah. overemphasize this, voting in the midterm elections and getting everyone you know to vote for the Democratic mm -hmm. Party, whether you like them or not, just as a stopgap, yeah. even as the mm -hmm. worst, least worst option is still better than living mm -hmm. under fascism. Yes. Yeah, I agree. I, well, I, 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 Positive thing to end on. There's been some <laughs> no, I thought you were saying that that comparatively was a positive thing, but no, we will get to the positive thing eventually. Oh, yeah, the, well, there's been some amusing toadstool Trump penis memes going about. <laughs> <laughs> oh yes, I have, have one in the group. Yeah, I haven't, I haven't oh. seen, uh, I haven't seen any Yeti pube memes, which is disappointing. No, I so agree. To point those out to me. That, that we have to fill that gap in the market. Guys, mm -hmm. we need okay. some memeing on the left to break down that uh, stereotype the left can't meme. <laughs> well, that's it's not even a stereotype. It's just a thing right-wing people say. It doesn't really matter if oh, it's yeah, true. Right. They've you're got right. fucking that's Ben right. Garrison cartoons. They can fuck off. Like, do you know what I mean? Mm. The idea yeah. of the left can't meme is absurd. Oh, wow, they've got the OK symbol, and they drink milk and Pepe. <laughs> fuck off, can you meme, you pricks? Yeah, and Pepe wasn't even their original creation. They just stole it from somewhere else and just take it, well, take it as theirs. Yeah. yeah, they're not creative at all, honestly. Hmm. All right, so Indeed. you guys can see my screen. I'll share it here in a second. Um, oh, no, you guys can't see my screen, but I'm trying to find the pictures from the group, so just so you know. But for some well, reason, well, well, you're going to have to show us the screen then at some point, aren't yeah, you? Yeah, I will. I'll find it first. Uh, uh, she knows. Yeah, I just want. Uh, I will mention that. I will mention that I did change my Twitter handle today to Mushroom Cock and Yeti Pubes. <laughs> oh, for the, the weirdest, the fucking weirdest sounding ingredients for a meal I've ever heard. <laughs> so if you follow at some run and geek, that is three three in the word geek, then you will see my screen name as in Mushroom Cock and Yeti Pubes. <laughs> I, I did an anagram of Yeti pubes. Uh, I stand pie or something. I can't remember what it is now. Uh, and that was, and then I had the mushroom image before it, and then the anagram for Yeti pubes because it was the, yeah, you can get that. Um, right. So now, dang it, I'm having a hard time with this. Here we go. So, yes, this was <laughs> well, found on Twitter. That looks like, the, it looks like a Trump candle. I, you said that, but I don't know how you can think it looks like a candle when it it's got a looks wick like coming out at the end of its cock. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't think of that as yeah. I, to me, it looked like a carrot with a like a root, a new root growing. But um, yeah, I can well, see where clearly, that's clearly that's clearly a wick on on a Trump cock candle. So that came up on Twitter, and then that's even, what she said. 
yes. And then uh, um, let's see. Uh, I'll just do, do this quickly. Uh, it's a public group, so it's all right. So there we go. <laughs> see that? Yep, I see that too. Well, that's, it's only when you get that with the two of them together, like that, you realise that the the carrot just isn't orange enough. <laughs> so, there you go. That's not your fuel for everyone in the chat. Enjoy. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and that's uh yeah, that's in the group. If you want to have it for yourself, you can go find it there. Yeah, you go, can and make find, it go, and, go and join the group because something, something, something. It's awesome. Yeah, and then we also put up links to the podcast when I actually get around to doing them. Yeah, indeed. So. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, yeah. So that 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 uh, nightmare fuel now. That's definitely a, a more <laughs> enjoyable. Yeah. Well, I also I posted one of the. It was so I didn't make it, but someone made it of you know the Sharon Stone scene where she crosses her legs and yeah. You, uh, <laughs> with Donald Trump's face over her face, and then. <laughs> In the open leg thing, you see an upside down toad from Mario Kart between the legs, <laughs> and that made me that made me feel slightly sick whilst also laughing hysterically. So I thought, well, I'm tw I'm, I'm posting that out to everyone. Yes, that's amazing. If I have to explain. Oh no, you dropped out again a little bit, but you were experiencing it. Then everybody else has to. Yes. Mm -hmm. good. Uh, yeah, I, I shared the image of a belief Trump with the carrot legs onto my Facebook, and like I think my brother said, I cannot unsee this now. <laughs> <laughs> no, once you've seen it, you can't unsee it. Uh, all right, guys. Well, on that, um, Jonathan, because uh, Kevin is always so resistant, and you, you're pro chat. Is there anything from the chat that you have you watched it at all? Have you been checking? It I out? have watched it, and so I have been monitoring. So there's been some been interesting uh, conversations, but I have. Oh, okay. <laughs> but, <laughs> is but I didn't want to like share it because I, on air because yeah, it's usually is like something that like no, it's something you gotta like see when That's it true. goes live the, the replay and something like that, and then also we can just like nominate some of the highlights from the chat and stuff like that. And I can't really think of anything. I there were some a couple of times when I was just laughing out loud. It was because like Annette uh, posted vote blues eleven six eighteen. With a mushroom emoji, and that caused me to laugh. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. Well, when I go back, I'm going to be back in the States on the holiday. I'm going to probably end up doing some canvassing there for the Democratic candidates for the state election. And, uh, oh, yeah. I, I, and I, I'm going, yeah, I'm going to work with like, Planned Parenthood. I joined their like uh, act. The activism group essentially so like i'm going to like um to be doing some canvassing when i have a free saturday free sunday as well so yeah, yeah. I, I might have to go out and get a um what's a toad t-shirt <laughs> yeah. see how many people get the joke yeah. well a, a small number but not a freakishly small number <laughs> <laughs> that was a reference to Kevin's comments in the last hangout, which if you haven't heard, you can go catch the podcast or on either of our channels. So, Jonathan, um, is there anything coming up on your channel that you want to plug before we wrap this up? Uh, I'm I, I, if I actually get to work and I sh I will plan to I'll go and plan to post up on some more movie reviews and stuff like that. I think I'm going to like uh, the next movie review I plan to like edit together and post up is Lou of the Wall. It's an anime movie I saw like months ago. I thought it was really good. But some recent I will just quickly share some recent movies I saw recently. Searching is really good. I would strongly recommend that one. I actually like White Boy Rick. It's kind of like blow except that the main character is a teenager and uh I yeah go subscribe to my channel uh summer and the geek i'll try to post some more things maybe do like i will eventually do like the political compass tests and either record that and put it up on my channel or just stream it live so keep out for eye off for that and uh oh and uh, at in an hour and 15 minutes i uh, will be like sheaves shives ask, ask away and i'm going to be in the uh, live chat for that and uh also i think i'm not sure i haven't checked but like ted Charas usually does like a live a hangout a uh, spack chat where basically he reads off questions from the live chat tom is usually in that live chat and uh okay. if i remember and <laughs> yes, and if I remember, I'll probably wake up and be in a live chat for uh, Tetrarat's back chat. So ch check out uh, Tetrarat's channel as well. And uh, yeah, that's it for yeah, me. Ted, Ted is fucking awesome. And as we already learned, 
massive cock. <laughs> the the hung horse of the Shire. What was that nickname you gave him? <laughs> the hung horse of the Shire. Yeah, and I'm not talking about he's hung like a Shire horse, horse's cock. I mean, he's got a, a cock the size of a fucking horse. <laughs> no <laughs> Um. Yeah, I was, oh, I was going to say something, but now I forgot. That's all right. It probably wasn't important. Uh, okay. Kevin. Okay, you were distracted by a massive cock. Oh, I was <laughs> completely distracted by the mental images of massive cocks. You're right. But now I remember what it was. It had to do with the fact that uh, I have something for Jonathan. If I, if I can't make the live show, a question for Ted that I have, and maybe I can just ask him directly. But if you do it on a show, then more people will see it. I've learned from watching reaction videos to rap battles and rap songs that when a rapper speaks really fast or in a very punctuated sort of you know spitfire sort of machine gun kind of way they call it spazzing out and mm. and they don't mean it in a negative way at all it's actually like it's a really high way of it's it's a you know very technically proficient way of of doing rap and because they speak about spitting rhymes you know so there's a lot of um and then the the spazzing goes with that so i was wondering if if in that context if one, I mean, I think spaz is a is a negative term, and I don't use it yeah. to describe people. Yeah, yeah. I can't remember the last time I even heard that word used, and that's why it stuck out to me. Um, but if it's used in that context to describe that technique, would he mm -hmm. find that use offensive, or does he think that the decontextualization from the negative connotations to actually describing something more positive um, is a, a maybe an okay, you know, use of or appropriation of that term? Did you just eat a fucking oh, uh, thesaurus? <laughs> Jesus. That was, that was long this is why I like Christy Winters. She's so nerdy. <laughs> this is what it's like I to live more... in my head, Kevin. Every day, all the time. Well, it's if, not too different from for me, you, honestly. If you, get, if you get really drunk on Guinness and then imagine yourself living in a kaleidoscope, that's my <laughs> fucking Tell you what, someday I'll come to Birmingham. We'll get drunk on Guinness, and we'll find a kaleidoscope, and we'll see <laughs> if I can walk and watch one part of a kaleidoscope out of one eye and walk with just looking straight ahead with the other. That sounds amazing. What a holiday. <laughs> <laughs> um, Kevin, is there anything on your show coming or your channel coming up that you want to plug? Uh, yeah, I'm still I'm going to get the Descent of Manosphere, the International Conference on Men's Issues 2018, that fucking forest of MRA derp. Uh, I'm going to get that out um, hopefully in the next week. God, it's been dragging that one. Um, uh, yeah, and uh, what else? Just some shit. <laughs> All right. So the usual. Yeah. <laughs> for you. Yeah, as for me, uh, I haven't been able to do as No much one time. asked. No one asked, Christo. Yeah, so you don't get to I'm plug yourself. Anyway. I don't care. Hey, Christy, what do you have coming up on your channel? Yeah, now someone has been asked. Oh, see, now here's Jonathan <laughs> subverting the dynamic. See, this is, this is why I don't allow the peasants on the show. <laughs> they, get ideas, they get ideas above their station, and now I'm going to have to execute them. <laughs> Like the feudal lord that I know myself to be. Send him back to the chat. You brought him up to the manor house for the night. Send him back to the surf. Uh, no, no, I, no. I, I, I live in, the, I live in the Seattle area. I actually live on a feudal lord of Jeff Bezos. So I, there's that. Yeah. So I actually know what it's like to be a surf, huh? It's okay. But as I, as I like the, as I like the, uh, uh, the technically they're called faggots. To, uh, the, a little historical fact for you there. The bundles of hay around good. him. Uh, yeah, uh, yep. as I set him on fire at the stake, um, I will be saying, Christy, you brought this on him. You allowed him to come. <laughs> you knew that you knew what was going to happen. <laughs> Went ahead and did it anyway. So, exactly. women, you, uh, can't, you can't trust women. If there's one thing we've learned from tonight, nah, I'm yes, joking. yes, we're dipping back I into the incel world. Sorry, channeling, I was channeling my Jordan Peterson there for a second. Oh, right? okay. I thought you were dipping into incel world, but they're so similar. It's kind of hard to tell them well, apart. Yeah, they're, they're, um, the, the lines are rather more blurred than I think either of those groups of people would like to admit. Mm. Yeah, yeah, unfortunately. But yeah. let's not have to get on another topic, another so sad anyway, topic. Anyway, Christy, <laughs> yeah, what the I fuck gonna... are you up to? <laughs> <laughs> so I haven't been able to do quite as much uh, produced content, honestly, because I'm being Lazy giving Lazy. more responsibilities at work. So, um, mm. yeah. Uh, uh, oh, just... oh, right. Just being productive in the real world. Mm -hmm. Just getting pushed into lower management. 
<laughs> civil servant being pushed up, up the lane, up the chain of command. Anyway, uh, I'm hoping to balance that out by doing uh, shorter videos rather than longer ones. And like I said, and then spending mm -hmm. more time on the, the one on the Catholic Church. But the next thing coming up on my channel is Sunday. We have our patron hangout. So yes, we'll hear and I'll be Tom. there. Yes, you'll be there, Tom. Um, we'll have his report oh, from God. Women mm -hmm. Work, a Secular Women Work Conference. Mm -hmm. And yep. also, I'm trying to push my uh, patrons into letting me completely nerd out and go through the PDF on the YouTube Alternative Influencer Network because <laughs> I, I got a copy Jesus. of it. Jesus. I printed it out. I printed it out and I've read the executive summary um, and the first two sections, like on the theory and the stuff we covered today. But she does some really interesting theoretical analysis on like the common ideological um, sort of positions or topics that come up. Oh, Christy, stop. I'm going to wet myself. <laughs> so um, I'm looking forward to, to, to nerding out and trying to get have them you, done. Yeah. Have you got it pinned up on your wall? Is it like that meme, you know, the conspiracy meme thing where he's got like a thing on the wall? <laughs> Yeah. Well, that's what the graph looks like. That graph yeah, exactly. looks like, yeah. The, yeah, the red twine all over on all those different names that will connect. Imagine, it's a conspiracy. Got, yeah. Christy's, Christy's got it on her wall, and she's studied. She knows every inch. Oh, Kevin, it's next to my pillow. Well, fair enough. She <laughs> reads it every night. <laughs> Uh, yes, As, uh, no, uh, Chrissy. I am all for that. I I want to read that PDF too. If you, so, if you link it into the group or something like that, then yeah, I will definitely like when I have time, definitely look over it because like I want to be nerd out over this thing too. Yes, uh, especially since it annoys people like Sargon immensely. Oh yeah, I want to. Him. I want people to understand the methodology. Basically, it's inductive methodology and where it sounds and where one reasonable people could quibble. But overall, she's being data driven and drawing conclusions from observation. So, stop. <laughs> okay, so uh, that's a preview of Sunday. If you want to come along, you can check out this channel on Sunday. All, I I don't like to cut you off mid nerd stream, but we're nearly two hours in, and this is dangerous territory because we can go into this. <laughs> It could be a fucking days later. That those six hundred and sixty nine hours of remaining disk space on order to be tested. It'd be severely All right, tested. All right, I'll keep the I'll keep the wolf at the door. I'll hold off. That's what he said. Yes, and, indeed. Uh, until Sunday. Yeah, but he lied. He came everywhere. It's ridiculous. <laughs> he came everywhere. <laughs> oh. So everyone, um, you guys in the chat have been awesome. People in the future are watching. No, you haven't. None of Thanks you have. For watching. No. All the way to the end. Uh, Kevin's been naughty boy as always. And Jonathan's <laughs> been delightful and taking my side, which I really like. So more of that. Thank you very much. From guests. Thank you. Um, <laughs> goodbye from me and goodbye from uh, the rest of the guys. Say goodbye, Jonathan. Goodbye, Jonathan. And say goodbye, Kevin, the very naughty boy. Goodbye, Kevin, the very naughty boy. <laughs> Bye, you guys. <laughs>